Welcome to Circuit. Chris Amon here and Fielding Manfield for round three and four of Repco D1NZ. And we're about to get underway with a very busy, busy day. The weather gods have not been kind to us. Friday qualifying was absolutely abysmal. But to be fair, the shower's running at the moment. They say it's going to get a bit dusty a little bit later on around midday. But I can say right now, it's actually clearing up here at Circuit Chris Amon. So, I'm going to say the weather gods are smiling on Repco D1NZ today. Busy old day. We've just get underway with pro sport. Remember, Adam Whitehead yesterday, top qualifier, and conditions were like being on a skating rink. Everybody had a, a rough old day. Believe it or not, uh, Taylor James in pro, and is not his car, someone else's car, was the top qualifier. Something about that car. We're not too far away from getting away from the first battle. So I'm going to bring in a almost retired, semi-retired uh, drifter. And that, of course, is Ben Jenkins. Welcome to the commentary team, pal. Are you ready to go? Definitely. And I'm really relishing the opportunity to join your team. It's a bit different being on the other side of the, the fence for this weekend, but I'm going to enjoy it. OK, qualifying was horrendous yesterday. Conditions are a bit dry. We're seeing smoke for the smoke show. If you're sitting on the starting gate right now, what's going through your head? What part of the track do you need to worry about? Definitely. Yesterday, we saw the conditions were not ideal. And the boys did a very, very good job getting through that qualifying and pro and pro sport. Right now, head's clear. You've reset for today for your battles and come sitting in the driver's briefing this morning, listening to the most important part of the track from the judges is that outer zone one. So focusing on that, the rest of the lap will come too. Are you missing this? Uh, I sort of am seeing yesterday's weather, definitely not missing in the weather. Drying up today, definitely getting a bit jealous. Yeah, and it's also the draw big on the tally up there, so <laughs> sure as well. All right, get out of here. Go get with Steve the Motor because we are good to go. Battle number one, Pro Sport Board Top 32. It's Crinkle and Parry at the line right now. So let's go. Repco, D1NZ, Pro Sport, round three. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Stephen McIver just said, welcome along to Manfield Circuit, Chris Amon. This is round three of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship, and it is Pro Sport Top 24 time. First battle of the day will be Daniel Crinkle going up against Ryan Parry. We see Ryan Parry in the red S14 just going through, getting ready to scrub. Top 24 time. They'll be battling their way through into the 16, into the 8, into the 4, and then we will be finding ourselves who is going to battle for the final. First battle of the day, as we mentioned, Daniel Crinkle versus Ryan Parry, and then we'll be moving to Zach Zeta versus Dean Young, Luke Chapel Sayer versus Nathan Williams, and uh, we'll work our way through until there is just one. So it's a great day to sit back, relax, and watch a bit of D1NZ action as we go down to the hands of Launchmaster Willie chucking in the massive Munna Wave. And it will be the higher qualifier, which is 16th place qualifier Daniel Prinkle, who will lead out the first half of the battle with Ryan Parry in the chase position as we welcome to the commentary box Mr Ben Jenkins. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Ready to go. Let's see some good battles. All right, well, here we go. We're going to start grabbing gears and making our way through into the first part of the section. A slow start for Ryan Parry. Crinkle straight into action. Here we go, Ryan Parry. A little bit of distance around as we see oh, Ryan Parry spin in the chase. Now, of course, it's very important for the lead driver. He has put a wheel off to complete the run. If he doesn't, it will be considered a 0 0 essentially. So, Crinkle he still has some work to do. Crinkle needs to finish this lap off, grab some points to move into the second pass, but like you said, he has to finish this lap. So he'll come through, get to the end of it, and then it's going to be straight into, is there any mistakes by Crinkle? Was there any contact that could basically zero up from the very, from the very beginning? We'll obviously head to the replay shortly, and we'll find out what the go is. So what happened here? Yeah, here we go. There's a lot of distance between the two, so I don't know if there's going to be any factors of Crinkle. No, it just looks like Ryan Perry has done that on his own spinning but the most important part here is that crinkle needs to finish the lap to grab a 10-0 score so wc is yeah. very fine so that you see that's the first thing we're having a look was there a straight line at that point there the judges they can't hear us so we're certainly not trying to sway them definitely looks like testing conditions these boys i think had a good practice session in the dry before and now they're getting tested with Quite a bit of uh, moisture on that sweeper. It's never a nice thing to do is when you're uh, having a look at all that moisture out there on track. Not the easiest of conditions, but I guess it's the same for everybody. It definitely is, and it's not the greatest conditions and one of the trickiest corners when the weather is uh, not the greatest, that's for sure. <laughs> 
well they'll obviously go back down to Launchmaster Winnie Willie for the second half of this battle. It'll be Ryan Parry soon to basically lead out this battle. One of the hardest things, you can force a mistake from the chase position, very, very hard to do that from the lead, if not impossible. So right now we're assuming that it's a 10-0 advantage. However, Daniel Crinkle, we would question whether or not that was a straight line coming into the start of Splash. Now, splash is a word we're going to hear quite a bit. There's a turn here at Manfield. As we come through the first of the right-handers and switch around that area there, which is Marshall Box 3, we know it is splash. That's what we'll be calling it. Well, let's go as we start grabbing gears. Again, we saw a slower start by Ryan Parry this time here. Sometimes we play a bit of mind games. We'll uh, see how we go this time here. Yeah, right. Ryan Parry's got a lot of work to do if he is sitting on 18-0. So let's see how he goes in the lead. Well, again, off we go. Start grabbing gears, accelerating off the line. A little bit faster start by Parry this time as he leads into the first turn. And of course, Crinkle's going to know that he's at an advantage. Parry right off the line, but Crinkle, there goes a zero. And Got contact. Contact is there. He come through there, but it definitely looks like that sweeper is causing some tricky driving conditions. Now, are we agreeing that, I mean, I think that right now we're looking at two terrible runs and that is going to see both drivers being given a zero. I assume that the uh, the only call that we can make is to go again and uh, the judges will have potentially no, no reason to do anything but uh, zero both runs. So we'll probably see these guys here go again uh, for, for the reasons that we've said. We saw a mistake by Ryan Perry in the first half of the battle and then we're going to see the same thing. It's a tricky sweeper for these boys and a tricky battle first up. Wouldn't want to be in the judges' box, but as we see some contact there, Daniel Crinkle not chasing Ryan Perry out wide on the sweeper. There's nothing worse than when you zero out and then if you're the lead driver, and then next minute the guy who's basically zeroed on you just comes knocking on your door anyway. Definitely. <laughs> but one of the things to also consider is under the drip, the conditions that they're in right now, to go through and reinitiate a form of drift is actually a bit of practice time. It is, it is finishing off, grabbing a, a little bit more seat time there, if they were to go through. Welcome everyone who is tuning in to the, uh, the Book of Face, the Facebook to YouTube and wherever else they're uh, coming from. Let us know where you're from. It's always interesting to see who's from where. Well, this is the second half of the battle time now, or second half of the second battle, sorry, left-hand side of the tree, and it's Zach Zyden going up against Dean Young. Issues for Dean Young over uh, overnight. He did not qualify yesterday, had to come through and qualify this morning. That's correct, Dean Young having an ECU issue overnight, his team being on it, and uh, got some parts delivered overnight, and he was allowed, due to the ruling of the two rounds being together, to enter the competition this morning, so good to see him back out there. We're going to go down and find out which direction it's going to go. Have they made a decision or is it going to go OMT? Or Ryan Parry takes the win. Ryan Parry takes the win there. Just, just a quick chat, mate, because we're busy. Not the best run, but you get the win, so you'd be stoked with that. I'm stoked with that, yeah. Way better than last last round, so I'm happy. Take it and get going. Thank you. Take it and get going. I think that's definitely the uh, the way to go. All right, we've got people from Christchurch. We've got people from Timaru. Hello, Mike Davey. How are you? So, of course, the, uh, the Christchurch people go VIP. Mozambique. Wow. We are global here at uh, the D1NZ. And this is the second battle of the day. Left-hand side of the tree, Zach Zayden. He qualified in eighth position yesterday, going up against Dean Young. Dean Young had to settle for the last place. Uh, he actually had his qualifying this morning, so uh, he was told, just drive your car forward and you are going to receive one point. And that is the best you can get. Even if you were get to get 100, we're going to give you one. All right, it's Jay-Z versus Jay-Z. It's Sylvia versus Sylvia. As they all get ready to take on... This challenging where the conditions here of Manfield Circuit Chris Amon round three of the Pro Sport Championship part of the Repco D1NZ. Here we go, Dean Young trying to get on the attack on the sweeper on his chase run. Zach Zayden with a nice lead line there through that challenging sweeper as he switches through splash. He's on a pretty good line, giving a pretty good lead for Dean Young to be able to chase. 
We'll come through and switch. And this part here, yesterday we saw every car putting a wheel off. And, uh, well, we've seen it again. Probably easier in the chase position not to do that because there's a car in front of you. They make their way outside of the hairpin and the rolling burnout through the link flags to finish the lap. This one here, well, that's probably the best uh, best battle we've seen so far today. <laughs> Out of the three runs we've seen, definitely. Here we go on the replay. Dean Young trying to get up in the attack on Zach Antic's driver's door as they switch through the space. There's a little bit of a correction there from Dean Young in the chase. Looks like he's doing a bit of wheel work through that window. He pops back up onto the driver's door here of Zach's car to come through as Zach drops that wheel. It's going to get that deduction we were talking about yesterday. He'll come through to close up. So Zach, a nice job to finish the lap. Dean trying to c continue that uh, that proximity. And it's a shutdown. You can see the trucker out the window. Of course, we're here in, uh, here at Manfield Circuit, Chris Amon. Great town. Chris Amon, of course, the only driver, the only Formula One driver to ever race for uh, for the mighty Tifosi, the Scuderia Ferrari. Of course, uh, as you drive down, Brendan Hartley Drive to come here to Manfield. Great circuit, rich in New Zealand motorsport history. Yeah, great, uh, great heritage, great history. But it's second half of the battle time, and it will be Dean Young's turn to lead out. Let's see what Dean Young can do in the lead. I'm feeling there's going to be an advantage to Zach at this point with his tidy lead run. Dean having a few corrections in the chase. Let's see what happens when they're swapped around in one second. Well, it goes down to the hands of Launchmaster <laughs> Willie, getting his spirit fingers going with the Manorist of Mana Waves. Run two of the day, second run of this battle. It's car 14 is Dean Young, 786 is Zach Zyden Zyden in the chase position for the second half of their battle. This is top 32 for the Pro Sport Championship. And of course, if you are watching at home, just a Send us, a, send us a photo, whatever, post up a pic, make sure it's uh, public, hashtag D1NZ. All right, well, we're straight into action for Dean Young. Drags through, sets himself up, and here comes the lunge. Zach Zadon trying to launch himself up onto Dean's passenger door. There's a little bit of separation as they come through the second half of Splash. Is Dean Young going to keep on the track? Will we seeing the wheel drop? He makes it through. This is a tidy lead run from Dean. Quick snatch of the uh, handbrake that settles the car down just a bit so they can go and power out through the end of the circuit. And well, I mean, which way are we going to look? Let's have a look at the lap. A great lead run from Dean. Very good arc on the sweeper. He's bringing it into the touch and go. He gets that quite nicely. Putting on the nice lead run so Zach can get right up onto that door. Looks like Zach has piled on a little bit too much angle coming through splash, which is the result has been detrimental from getting out to that other clip. He's had to shortcut the track a tiny bit to get back into the proximity with Dean. Dean's just putting on a great lead run for Zach as they finish the lap. So of course, this is also a speedway town. You see the mighty Red Walker Motorsport uh, shirt there. There he goes, he waves there. Of course, uh, Wayne Hemi in the 591, Jordan Deere in the 581. Sam Rawson in the, uh, with that ma magnificent moustache. And the grass is looking green out here today. As we, uh, well, it looks like we might actually have a result. We'll uh, see if... All right, well, here we go. The result is coming through. Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and JT Farido, and that is an OMT. We are going again. Yeah. She's been told, just get out of there, get out of there. So, I mean, <laughs> it's a... Um, I don't, I kind of don't get that one there. We've got no MT for that battle there. I probably 
may have swayed towards. And of course, we don't know the mistakes or whatever people are thinking about. But I would have gone probably in the favour of Dean Young myself, whereas the previous one, which had a winner, was, in my view, clearly two zeros. So. As we see Dean Young here getting towed back into the pits. Hopefully his team have let him know he's in an OMT. Won't be happy. To get to it. Hopefully it's a quick fix to turn him around. But yes, definitely, Steve. I agree. Oh, um... I just don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's go to the next battle. This is battle number three of the day. It is Luke Chapelsea in the who qualified ninth yesterday. He's going up against Nathan Williams, who qualified in 24th place. Uh, well, well, I can assure you that Nathan Williams and Luke uh, look slightly different to what we're seeing out there. That's uh, Zach Zyden. And uh, let's just lose, we'll just lose that graphic. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see how this battle goes as uh, Luke Chapelsea goes through and gets into action. This is Nathan Williams in uh, the chase position, his very first time in the D1NZ Pro Sport Championship as they switch and get ready to power through uh, Splash. Chapelsea, a nice job to start with in that A31 Safiro. The A31 Safiro doing, up until that point, a pretty nice job in the lead run. There's a lot of separation between the two cars, though, from the start of the section, and it's not what the judges would have wanted to see. All right, things to look at in here is, uh, of course, we know that the... Um we know that the lead car obviously over-rotated coming into that last turn. So then we have to look back into this point here. Have kept, so we're going to look at the chase position because once a lead car over-rotates, the leader of the chase position does not have to continue their drift because of safety reasons. So I'm looking through here. I can't see any, to any point that he has lost drift. Advantage. Yeah, so advantage must go to Nathan Williams. Advantage to Nathan Williams there. Luke Chapel Sawyer having a rotation in the lead, and I don't really know what actually happened there. He was he was online to hit third out of zone, and it just spun on him. Okay, it's Adam Whitehead. Hanging out, checking out what's going on out there on the track today. SK Nagashima out there as well. And then, oh, look at look at these two here and those three there. There goes our amazing judges. There goes the even better looking uh, commentators. Definitely the, the one over here. Hello to everyone at home. Welcome along to round three of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. It's a fun job that we've got today. It's going to be a fun job. We're going to see some good battles. Let's hope this weather holds up and that Let's sweep hope we see dry. some great battles. I do not want to have a, uh, a day full of talking about mistakes. All right, well, we'll go and accelerate down the front straight here at Manfield Circuit. Chris Amon, we saw a mistake in the last battle, the last, the first half of the battle. And, sorry, I was just looking again at... Uh, so Nathan Williams in the 07... That is a D36 Nissan Skyline versus the mighty A31 Safiro. We'll see how this one goes. The lead driver, Williams, must hold on to his drift. Big drag to start. There goes a uh, the rear bootlet deciding to turn into the biggest wing we've seen in the D1NZ. Uh -oh. so he's having a couple of issues in the lead there, Nathan Williams, and he might have shut the car down. <laughs> we've got Luke Chippel Sawyer in the background. Having well, some trouble getting to the end of the section. Looks like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Looks like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. We've definitely seen a couple of tricky and challenging first up battles. We've got 20 odd comments in the wonderful world of Facebook at the moment. We'll have a look and see. So let's have a look and see. Okay, well that was, well that's a big drag, but it also uh, on the handbrake, but it looked like in a straight. Looked like a straight in there from Nathan Straight line Williams. there. So that car's fairly gripped up and just trying to snap it straight on the transitions. Okay, you talk about gripped up, what does that mean? Well, as we see in that transition when he tries to switch the car to head into the splash corner, yep. we saw that car on its transition stop the smooth transition and stay straight for just a couple of, uh, whether it be a millisecond or, or two, but it's very noticeable. And that's when you can see that these cars are gripped up. 
Well, I can tell you that the orange of that V36 also matches the hair, and he's going to be one very angry man. All he had to do was get to the end of the section, and he would have been through, but I guess now the judges will figure out what is next for them. Well, uh, I guess we'll go up and see the next battle then, which is... Well, hang on, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, JT Tavadido. Who do they choose? And it is an OMT. We get to go again. Oh, I'm the biggest fan of the one more time. Two OMTs in our first three battles. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> I think it should have been three OMTs. All right, well, uh, let's keep the... And off goes Launchmaster Willie. I told him, I told him this morning, you cheated yesterday. I saw you put a jacket on. He said, oh, I'm really sorry about that. I was getting wet. I'm like, yeah, but you've done that for the last two. All right, we've got Daniel Smith going up against James Jeffries. And that is on the left-hand side of the tree. They'll be going, that is to see who goes up against Justin Patterson based off his qualifying result yesterday in the top 16. What will accelerate into the first turn before heading into Splash. It's Daniel Smith in the lead position. Good angle by both drivers. Big monster power plant in that second car. Billet RB34. Daniel Smith doing a really good job on the sweeper there. That's one of the cleanest ones we've seen so far. He's putting on a great lead run with James Jeffries having some trouble in the chase. So he needs to go up and finish this lap. You can see, again, just settles the car down with the handbrake, gets back into action again. And we're going to say it's a solid lead run for Daniel Smith. Nice job by Digger Dan in the DK Smith excavation car there. They, of course, they talk performance developments on the side. Daniel with a nice arc on that sweeper. Didn't look like he had any challenges with grip coming through the transition. He's nailed the zones, gotten out nice and high. Hasn't put a wheel off, which we saw a lot. Track, got to the track edge nicely as he switches up into the last corner and James Jeffries having some trouble in that chase run. Well, we've had a lot of moisture in the air today and we're hoping that, uh, of course, when you start seeing those tyres billowing the beautiful cloud of happiness, it means that we can probably get a little thing up in the sky and go up and chase some cars down. And talking about that, riding on board with our man George from Inspire You Media. Of course, check him out on YouTube, Inspire You Media. Daniel Smith makes his way back down to the start finish line. As the crowd starts to build, cars getting ready to be sent out. And so, well, there's one car. And the rookie looks like he's going to start moving into position as well, James Jeffries. James Jeffries is taking a reset, probably talking to his crew over his comms and figuring out what he's going to do here. He's going to have to try and force an error to grab back some points. Bushmaster Willie just getting in the window of, with, uh, with Jeffries. There's a lot of heat coming out the top there too. You can see that heat haze. Okay, and now Willie is opening in there, so there's something going on there. So trying to look under the car as well. So what's Willie looking at? Mechanic Willie. You'll be saying, cuz, it's all good. You... So I wonder what the ruling is on this just one here, because is he allowed to work on that car? I was just thinking that if there's anything that needs to be changed on that vehicle, he's going to need to call this competition timeout. So I guess the question he had was, is my bonnet pins down? So Willie's just opened it up to see if the bonnet's actually latched, and it obviously isn't. So Willie's just working out how to see that's how you can find a rubbish way. So it could be, but there definitely is a tip technicality here if Willie is doing any changes to that vehicle. Other things to obviously discuss as well is well um Alright well uh I think while we've got the opportunity we'll uh 
maybe go up upstairs and have a have a chat to the team, the people that deliberate, that make the decisions here with the D1NZ. And it looks like the microphone will be in the hands of JT Farido. Welcome to round three. It is nice to have you here, mate. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Look, uh, a fun job for you guys today when you have to deliberate off mistakes. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a challenging morning so far. The weather was really good, as I'm sure you've explained to everyone. Um, there's scattered showers, slight, um, slight showers, which are affecting everything. Um, we've just, we're just doing our best, and um, so far we've got a couple of one more time. I mean, so when you've got these one more times, I mean, it's such a hard decision. I see here, you can obviously hear. Do you know what's happening over down on the grid? You can obviously hear. Um, yep, yep, yep. We, we had a throttle cable issue, so they're just sorting it. I think they've got it sorted, and they'll be back out on the line shortly, uh, back out on track. Well, it is a busy day for you guys. We'll be obviously cutting up as often as we can to uh, find out the information. Hey, just on the first battle of the day, why did Daniel Crinkle and Ryan Parry, why was the decision made in, in the favour of Ryan Parry? Do you know? It was just about a 10-0 each way, yep. and there was a slight advantage for Perry. Okay. Uh, that's it. Oh, well, thank you very much. Of course, our judging team, thank you very much for joining us. I'll let you put that one back down. Get back into your role, and an amazing role it is, as we go down to the hands of Launchmaster Willie. He's obviously sorted everything out. Now, when we're talking to the judges, we just get in there, because I know that there's so many things that you'd be like, that, that's rubbish. I mean, we know it's not our job to call them out, but I mean, as somebody who has judged before, as somebody who has, my director will kill me for making comments like that. He's a great guy. I've been in their position before. It's a tough job. No one really wants to be a judge, but those dudes do an incredible job. Okay, uh, what now? Daniel Smith. I like how, even if it's a race car, race cars can have electric windows. That's correct, they can. <laughs> so, we are going to see, okay, we've seen one car leave and I don't know why. It's all right, we'll be given all the information why. If he starts this drift, we'll consider that to be Jeffries is obviously pulled out. Are we gonna see him kick it into life? No, we're going back. So, I assume somebody's called their five minutes or Daniel Smith is well, it's going to be a tough one. Technically, there's going to have to look at some rules here because technically, James Jeffries pulled up to the line for his second run. Yes. So can he call his five minute? Or is he calling the battle off? It looks like they're waiting for maybe recovery to come and retrieve James's S15. Well, down into the pits we go. He's pulling up next to his team and uh, they'll be straight in the window. When I say straight in the window, get in the window, find out the information. So James Jeffries needs a toe, has called his five, but has he already used his five? Or is he allowed to call his five when he's pulled up to the line for the second run? Does he forfeit that run? We used to talk about bailout zones. Mm. You know, I mean, there's so many bailout zones, there's so many things going on. The one thing that we're all looking forward to, though, is that, of course, we're at round three today, round four tomorrow. And then we head to round five, and that is at one place. That is at Bay Park in Mount Monganui. Let's check it out. The Repco d National Drifting Championship is heading to Tauranga for the grand finale of the 2024 season. 50 of New Zealand's best sideways masters take on New Zealand's House of Drift, the concrete jungle of Bay Park Stadium, in a two-night electrifying motorsport showcase which crowns a champion. An atmosphere like no other with high horsepower, drifting battles, show cars, monster truck demonstration and more. Thousands of tyres, hundreds of battles, but there can be only one Drift King. Repco d one National Drifting Championship Grand Finale, Bay Park Stadium, Friday and Saturday, May 10th and 11th. Get your tickets now at d1nz.com. All right, so I, I think, have we heard some news? James Jeffries has withdrawn, so that's going to send Daniel Smith through. There we go, so James Jeffries has withdrawn from competition, so that means that we've got our next driver that's headed into the top 16, and that is Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith will be going up against Justin Patterson. Justin Patterson qualifying in fourth position yesterday, so uh, Daniel Smith with a qualifying position of 13. He's going to be a happier guy. See the uh, car heads back into the, uh, the garage. We'll get ready to send them for the next battle. 
Braden Mir up against Matt Kitto. Well, it comes down to scrub. Talk about the importance of getting, of what they're doing right here now. They're warming those fronts up, just taking that top layer off the rear tyres. So the brand new rear tyres have a little slick layer. Just need to dust that, that layer off that tyre just to grab into that gooey rubber for the grip, for the entry. down to the start again it is launch master willie who lets them go and they will start grabbing gears we talk about gears a lot of them are running quick change just spin what sort of like what sort of gear are you actually driving into i mean your third or fourth how does it work different setups different setups with different diff ratios different gearboxes five speed four speed six speed even some people with sequentials in the, the pro class the winter's quick change which i'll show you later allows for quick changes in the different ratio here we go all right well here we go straight into action it is this is round three of the repco d1nz the first run for Braden Ma and matt kitto into splash we go Braden Mayer with just a little Correction on the initial entry, but now he's putting on a bit of a show. And the leaders, we see some contact there. The whole rear of that S14 has gone. Punched. It's gone. Wow, that is uh, truly gone. Be good to see a replay of how that happened. If that was Braden's fault in the lead, or Matt Kato just getting a little bit too close. As we see here, Braden Mayer struggles to initiate that car. Maybe a little bit too much grip in the rear. Maybe not. Uh, Good enough effort to initiate the car as we see him come through splash. Matt Kato trying to get up and gain some proximity. A little bit of a gap being created here. Braden is quite shallow off that outer zone three. So maybe that is the reason just surprising Matt Kato into the tail end of that battle. But as we see the whole rear clamshell of that car has come off. So that, that car being an S14 chassis but having the body panels front and rear of an S15. I wonder how that one would be called, Steve. Oh, look, yeah, I think one of the things that we have to obviously look at is as they came down into the hairpin, the lead car was quite shallow, as you said. It was a little bit further down the track to where the judges wanted to. If they were further up the track, it would have taken them longer to get there, and it would have been that the chase driver was in a position to actually judge his speed off where he should have been. Because he's actually a shallow line, it means that the chase driver is able to catch up a lot faster and contact can be made. That's one thing to look at, but of course we also go back to the lead driver is a mobile clipping point for the chase driver. Um, hey, that's why we're commentators today. <laughs> That's the thing, the lead, the lead car, yes, is a mobile clipping point for the chase car. The chase car can't make contact, but the, the thing is, who caused the contact in that situation? So we see so some they've damage to the back of the that So one of the things that uh, we don't see as much on the coverage is the judges have got their own uh, replay system here. So the judges replay system, we see them there right now. So what they're doing is they've got their own different angles. They can look at a specific angle. Of course, we make angles for TV. We want to make it look good. They can use that same angle and watch an entire run from it. So whether that be uh, the guys upstairs, whether that guy be uh, our, our guys out there on the ground, or even the drone, they can watch a specific one. And you can see at this point here, Joel Counter's already, I've got my pen out. I think I've got my decision made. And, uh, they obviously have because Launchmaster Willie has sent the cars. It's the second half of the battle. So, of course, Matt Kitto and Braden Mir. Apologies for the uh, correct pr pronunciation in the first round. A few body panels hanging off Braden's car there. Let's see if they still all stay intact by the end of the run. As Matt Kitto lines up for his initiation. Well, let's see how this goes. It's S13 versus, what is that, a 15, 14, 15? 14, 14 A very big Oh, gap. wow, where's that? We've got body panels everywhere. The S13 losing the front left guard. I wonder if that's caused Braden Mayer to be quite behind. Well, it comes through to finish, and oh, is, it's body panels and mistakes which there, are leading the way today. There is a yard sale out there. There's a lot of fiberglass. So... Say on your car, you've got an immaculately presented uh, GT86. Where do the panels come from? The GT86, we actually moulded the back of, of Troy's car, so we uh, all created on the North Shore of Auckland. 
So we go through and we can see, obviously the thing that we just discussed there is can we put any blame on the, I don't know, the driver making the chase driver fall back, the chase driver losing half his panels as well. Definitely a tough task for these judges to figure out for these first four battles. <laughs> Let's have a look and uh, see some of the comments from uh, certainly some VIP Drift fans. We love the Drift South team. Some guys say, from uh, sorry, David Thomas, he says, oh, Speedway, three minute bell. Uh, yeah, that's a definitely a Speedway thing to do. We do a five minute bell here in, in drifting. Hello to Tim Farsledge. Is Fanger Dan drifting? Of course Fanger Dan is drifting. It's, uh, how long have we been going for? 21 years? And I, has Fanger ever missed a, missed a round? Don't think so, Don't it's think a day so. one. 21 years. Kia ora Michael, this is Morena, Stephen and Ben. Oh, that must be MacGyver, but that's okay. You can call me what you want. Is it on KO at 2.30? Yes, it is, Bryce. All right, we're going to go down and we'll find out what the judges say. Still can't see any results up on our screens, so we can't even help out, Stephen. He's looking around, he says, is there anything at the back? No. Is there anything working on that side? No. And it's going to be an OMT. Andrew Redwood came up with the result, but because JT and, uh, and Joel couldn't, it will be a one more time. So an OMT one more time. Yeah. So is that, that's three OMTs so far, a uh, driver pulling out a competition to, and then the only one that was a result, I think we should have been in one more time as well. So by the time we're going, we should have Pro Sport finish by tomorrow afternoon, and then we'll go on to Pro for the next two rounds. Well, I know there's a lot of support out here for the VIP team from the South Island, and uh, we'll get ready to let them loose with Sam Edinburgh going up against Aidan Daly from Tauranga. It's the RHP Red Harrison Performance Limitless Tyres S14, who is going to be chasing down the big, bad VIP Structurals and Steels Commodore of Sam Edinburgh. Sam with a nice initiation there onto the sweep, a nice wide arc, allowing Aiden to get up on that door into a nice proximity. As he comes through, he's just going to push too wide there, and that's unfortunately going to be three wheels off for Sam. So we can say so, that. I don't actually know what happened. So of course we've just seen one, two, maybe three wheels off for Sam Edinburgh, and Aiden Daly did pull out of drift at that point. Now. The judges, in theory, would have to look at that as that the lead, the chase driver has been essentially led into a position where safety would be paramount and they've actually had to pull out of the drift. Let's have a look at what happened. So Sam Edinburgh on a nice line around that sweeper as he switches to come through splash, gets the touch and go just a bit too wide. He's on a wide line and then unfortunately over the rip strip, grabs the cone, there's three wheels off Aiden in the chase, having to pull out. So he's had to pull out now. When he did go around the corner, when Sam did go around that corner and he was three wheels off, the car, which we know has got great lock, was almost at sort of 90, which would indicate to the chase driver that he's about to over rotate. So um, I'm assuming that Aiden has just looked at evasive action being the case. It's okay, put your hand down. You're fine. Yeah, there we go. Chuck us a wave. Yeah, got any mana waves out there? Hello, Sam Rawson. Who else have we got out there? Enjoying the day. There we go, turning up the second pass. Dan's, Sam, sorry, is gonna have to cause a mistake here in his chase. To apply the pressure, all Aiden Daly needs to do is get through this lap in the lead done a solid lead and he'll be going through. All right, well, we'll go up and start accelerating off the line. We know that, well, we believe that 
Aiden Daly is in a points advantage, so one of the things he is going to have to do is hold on to his lap. We do not want a day full of mistakes, choosing the results. So let's see what Aiden Daly can do in the lead position. Can Sam Edinburgh cause a mistake by the car in the lead position? They come and switch through splash. Nice initiation there through Aiden. Had to grab the handbrake a couple of times down that sweeper, but he is doing all that he needs to do to grab those points to move on into the top 16. As we see him come through, there's a little big gap back to Sam. Big drag twice on the handbrake for uh, Aiden Daly, but he comes through to finish, and I would be suspecting that we'd call that thumbs up. But who would know? Of the battles we've seen, definitely who would know? But fortunately, it's going to look, it's going to sway in the way of Aiden Daly. As all he did here was all he needed to do was grab those points. Well, it doesn't look like Sam was close enough in proximity to cause a mistake. And unfortunate for that man, he's travelled a long way from Christchurch. It's certainly wonderful to have that team come through, and it's been an absolute pleasure to have VIP team here as part of the Repco D1 NZ National Drifting Championship. What sort of pressures would you be running on a day like this? I know it all depends on so many different things. What's the lowest pressure you've ever run? Uh, at the custom tracks, you get down to a bar. That's normally the the, um, the pressure we would run, around 14 PSI. We used to have the rule that it had to be at that pressure. They've now abolished that rule. I and it's up to you. But it, and we can bring them down to about 4 PSI if need be. No bead locks allowed, Steve. <laughs> I wish they said that about the uh, OMTs. All right. Let's see if a uh, result has been decided. And yes, it is. Cut and dry. Aiden Daly will take the win. Well, you got that one, Yages. Had to play smart that second run. You did the job, buddy. Yep. Nah, thanks. Um, that was a bloody good run. Um, you know, first time on a track, it's always good to come out with the win, so just carry on and see how it goes from here. Just quickly, how tough is it out there with the mum? It's drying. Oh, it's drying, but there's still patches. Um, slippery and wet, but, you know, you're adjusting to it. Into the next round, well done. Sweet. Thanks, Eves. All right, well, uh... Go again. Next battle of the day, right hand side of the tree. And this is Daniel Edwards going up against Matthew Brown. Bit of smoke coming out the back end, do you? Just having a look and see what is actually coming up with Matt Brown's car. Big gap been created already on the lead up. Daniel Edwards going to fire into the initiation here. Nice and wide initiation. Matt Brown is sneaking up to grab that proximity as they switch on the touch and go. Nice job there by Daniel Edwards. Pushing just a little bit wide though in the, the centre part of Splash, but he is putting on a good lead run here and allowing Matt, Matt Brown to catch up. One thing that Daniel Edwards is obviously going to be trying to do is ensuring that he can maintain his drift and continue to climb through. That man there leads the championship currently. He does, he does. Good display in qualifying yesterday from Daniel. Not as, not as high as he probably would have wanted for the championship. But he knows how to do it come battle time. Well, we'll see as he comes through splash. Great job from the lead position. Just watching to see uh, that smooth arc is what you kind of want to see. And not a lot of front wheel correction. It's always going to give you the best kind of looking run. The judge is going to like it more. They can see that wheel work. You saw it just coming out on that final turn. Nice and smooth from Daniel. Hello, Kesuke Nagashima, enjoying the drifting here. 86 Fighters AE86. Good to see Kesuke out there. We'll see him in action very shortly. A few Jace Brown fans out there. Actually, there's Jace Brown himself. And uh, caught up with Nikki, Nikki today. She's there on the left-hand side. Hello, Jace. And there goes the kids above. 
Nikki's done a beautiful job getting Jace's car all spick and span. Oh, get paint up. There we go. Go up, cameraman. Go up. All right, well, back on the front straight here, and we'll see these cars tour back to the line. Matt Brown swap over in the lead. I would say there's a fair advantage swaying of the way of Daniel Edwards. Let's see what he can do in his chase run. Matthew Brown's going to need to put on a pretty stellar lead run here. One shot photography saying, let's go, DE Drift. Let's go. Dane Hamilton says, it's so great to see a bit of tyre vapour today. D1NZ uh, admin says, up the waz. Thank you, D1NZ admin. You always bring the good. Those great comments that often don't make any sense to anyone apart from up the waz. Matthew Brown, Daniel Edwards, it is Matthew Brown who will lead out. We saw him, I think he was top qualifying round one in Topor. He was uh, running Russell Veer's immaculately presented uh, 180. Then he scratched it. <laughs> scratched it. <laughs> Here we go, Matthew Brown on the initiation, nice and wide there. Allowing Daniel Edwards to initiate fairly closely as they... Matthew Brown getting through that splash section, he's created a bit of a gap with Daniel Edwards. Daniel Edwards, all he needs to do is get back in that proximity zone, finish this lap off to grab those points. As we oh. see straight in from Matthew Brown, something might have happened there, all the car might be over-gripped. So it's either one or two things. One is overgripped, or was there contact to come through? I mean, I've got a slightly delayed feed as well. That gives me... No, I, don't, I think that was... I don't think there was contact there. I think there was a little mistake from Matthew Brown heading into that last corner, as we see the replay here. Nice initiation from both the boys. Well, it comes through, the switches through splash, and you see the, the attempt to close up proximity. He managed to actually form a gap, does Matthew Brown, but they come through, and this is the point here. What happened? Matthew Brown gets that out of zone, out of zone three, quite nicely. Just as he's moving up to the top of the last corner, to create his attack on the apex. He's had a little mistake there, and that is going to be a straight line for Matthew Brown. I like uh, D1NZ admin says up the Andrew South. We are huge fans of our so have you have you been in uh, taking taking part of Drift South before? Haven't taken part of Drift South yet. I'd love to. I'd love to get down there. They, they do some amazing things. Some really talented drivers down at Drift South. And some cool cars. Cool cars. A lot of D1 X D1 and Z cars go down there. What I like is when you go down to Rapuna and you just see show car after show car. Look, it's not about that right now. It is about what the judges said and one, two, three strikes in favour of Daniel Edwards. So champ, and I'm saying championship leader, cars all back together, feeling any pressure? Yeah, a lot of pressure today. We were battling with uh, steering issues all day yesterday, but we got it all sorted, I'm pretty sure. Just got to work our way back to the top. Well, you did it last time out. Go get it. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Go get it. Go get it. I like the sound of that. Donny Constable, have to agree with you there. Bryce Hocking, D1NZ is less, less controversial than our friends over in the United States. That event's going on right now as we have ours. I wonder what's been going on with the controversial calls, maybe. One or two. Well, we'll see what the Mac Civil BMW can do. That is on the right-hand side of the tree. Aaron Habib, and he'll be chasing down Rody Knowles in the RB25 powered Nissan Silvia MTF Finance Cambridge on the door of Rody's car. Him and, and uh, Justin Patterson, part of a two-car S13 team. And let's see how they go. Rody been drifting for many, many years. Aaron Habib stepped into D1NZ a couple of seasons ago, and he's absolutely loving it out there. Comes through to close the gap right on that back bumper. This is a nice looking battle. It's one of the tightest battles we've seen this morning already. Aaron Habib doing what he needs to do, just sitting in that chase pocket. He just needs to not over rotate and just finish this lap off. It's going to be a nice and tidy first pass. 
Well, that's a very nice looking uh, drift battle that we've seen today. Probably one of the better of the uh, that we've seen, considering every other one's finished in OMT. So, uh, let's, I'm really looking forward to what comes through when they come through and battle again in the second half. We're watching the replay here, and uh, Aaron Habib, a very nice job to close up that proximity. Brody really setting a nice line through here. Needed to be a little bit wider. Aaron Habib doing a great job in the chase run here. Brody Knowles cutting him off slightly on that sweeper. As we see them finishing off the lap, Aaron just trying to stay on that passenger's side of Brody's yeah. car. He did a very good job to finish that lap, lap off with the amount of proximity. Aaron was quite smart in that position there, if you want to look at it that way there. He actually backed that car in uh, before the hairpin um, quite early, so he sort of judged the, the speed of the car in front and was able to get claim back that proximity by switching around the same time, but actually being able to close up the distance that he had to travel, and that allowed him to stay on that back bumper. So That's correct. He's Scrubbed a lot of speed heading into that last corner, which helped him stay in that proximity without a mistake. Behind Rody Knowles as they chase here. Rody's going to need to put on a pretty, pretty good chase to pull some points back his way. Donny Constable says that they think that D1NZ drivers should come down to drift south and do a north versus south round. Did that a few years ago before I was competing. There was a north versus south D1NZ down there. I think when they went to. Levels Raceway. I say bring back the Waimati 50 and we can do it down there. Waimati 50, what oh, the event, what the event. Or two, oh it's great. All right, well let's have a look at the second half of the battle as Aaron Habib and Rody Knowles We'll go side by side. Rody will probably know that Aaron had set a really good uh, chase run. We talk about it so many times to have a great chase run. You've got to have a great lead run. So uh, Rody should be pretty happy with the lead he gave him. Slight gaps formed up. Can Rody close it up? Aaron Habib in the lead here. He initiated quite shallow. He did run a shallow line on that sweeper. It's pretty much the same as what Rody did in the first pass. Uh, Aaron Habib, he's, he's pulled out. He's made a mistake. Rody Knowles is going to finish this off. It's going to send him through to the 16. That's all he needed to do. Aaron Habib with the mistake. Well, we're still looking for a couple of spots to fill on the right-hand side of the tree. We're also looking at two more OMTs that have to be filled on the left-hand side, and that's going to work us out a top 16. This is the replay. Let's have a look at what went wrong for the Mac Civil construction BMW. Aaron, Aaron quite shallow on that sweeper. I don't know if there's an issue with the car. Oh, look, he's just smashing the steering wheel. He's like so uh, gutted with the mistake because essentially that's what it was. Mistake there in the lead from Aaron putting him out. His chase run. It was a great chase run. The best we've seen all day. We could say the advantage would have been swaying his way. Well, it comes down and it's cut and dry. It is easy to say it'll be Rody Knowles who takes all three strikes. Well, champ, you got it. Your first run, got the W. Yeah, I love it, mate. Must have been the little pep talk from uh, Steve McIver earlier, eh? Nothing to do with that, mate. I've got to say, uh, you, you had to just stay on him in that, that, uh, the chase. Yeah, my spotter said that I, he had actually a really good chase on me. Gave him a pretty good, a solid lead to chase me on and he said I just had to full send so it's what I got. Next round keep it going. Hey just a reminder Ben I th heard you mention about steering maybe for Aaron Habib. He had been having power steering issues this morning. It looked like it didn't look like there was a bit of an issue there for Aaron, Aaron Habib. Putting on a clinical chase run and unfortunately having the steering issues in the lead run which has knocked him out of competition. Well we move on to the next battle, and uh, this is a battle that I'm really uh, excited to see. It is Isaac Orridge, who qualified in 11th position yesterday, going up against Jody Bell, who qualified in 22nd. Jody Bell, of course, our local lass from the mighty Manawatu, sponsored by 2J Engineering. <laughs> Jody's definitely going to need to make up some of this gap to avoid an inactive chase, as we see Isaac initiate nice and early on the rev limiter through the sweeper, grabs the touch and go, Jody catching up as much as she can. I wonder if 
Jodie's been told that you know this track so much, you know those lines, she actually looks like she's taking more of the natural line through this. Uh, and you can see she really is closing up that gap, but she may not have done it on the... Oh, no, Jodie. See a straight line there from Jodie in the chase. EFI and Turbo looking after the motor for Jody Bell. D1NZ's very own chicken man. Would like to give him back sometimes. Well, let's have a look at this replay here of these two. You can see Jody really closing up. We talk about, I talk about the natural lines, which is coming through and hitting the inside clips more than anything. She's done so many laps of this track here that it, sometimes it can fall through a little bit easier. You see a massive mistake where the car's got a colossal push on and uh, unable to basically uh, get that lock to, to bring the rear of the car around. Yeah, very unfortunate Jody in the chase. There she was catching up in a bit of proximity from the start of that battle. As we see Idra, Isaac Aldridge finishing the section, and I would say that would be a heavy advantage if not a 10-0. It would be a 10-0 in the way of Isaac Aldridge. Well, I just say, Jody, you've just got to send it. Let's see what happens. Pressure's going to be on for her lead run. It's the crew out there going through and having a look at the track, making sure that the bumpers are picked up, The uh, as with quite often the lost hopes and dreams. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, well, Willie's going through and he's uh, checking in Jody Bell's car. Make sure everything's okay. The windows are up. We have to run the windows up in these competition cars. Okay, Jody Bell off in the lead. Isaac to chase. So Jody Bell, we're interested to see what she chooses to do. If it was me, I'd say just fully send it and uh, worry about the result at the end. She knows the track really, really well. She's from here. She's from the 102 Car Club. And big shout out to the team from the 102 Car Club as well. And Jody is just doing what she knows best at this track, and that is a full set. Yeah, good lead run from Jody so far. Hits her marks and her touch and go. She switches through. Isaac Aldridge needs to be careful. It's going to be an inactive chase. He is quite a far way back. Jodie just needs to finish this lap off. Oh, Jodie, that was great. As we see the end of that battle. Here we go, here's the replay. Jodie Bell doing a pretty good job on the sweeper. Grabbing the, the zones as she needs to, the OZ zone one. Gets out to OZ zone two. As she switches to hit up to the final corner. Bit of a straight line there, and then a big chuck the last corner. Definitely not the tightest battle we've seen them today, but good on them. Good on Jody for getting out there. All right, well, we'll get ready to go to the next battle and we'll see how we go with that one there. <laughs> see Willie on the right-hand side. He's just practicing as um, the Munnerist of Munnerwaves. And they'll come down and we'll see who's going to be spoken to. You enjoying your day in the commentary box, mate? I am. I am relishing this opportunity to be up here with you, Steve, on the other side of the fence. And Stephen McGuire will be happy. You'll be able to hear now. OK, Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter and JT Fadido say that they think Isaac Orridge is going to be the Merp person that goes through. Hey brother, uh, Chase, could it be tighter? Yeah, just I think maybe don't have either enough grip or enough wheel speed in the car, so just struggling around that first sweeper to, to keep the car pushing forward, but um, probably just need to commit a bit more on the entry and sort of get after it, but it's all right, happy to take the win and move on to the next one and try and improve from there. End of the 16. That's the one, cheers boys. Hey, just a, uh, just a little note to our team, sunshine and blue skies and it's warm. That's good, Steve. That's what we want to see. Some sunshine. Dry this track out. That rain. Stay away for the rest of the day so we can see some action. Here we go. We're on a rerun. An OMT of Zach Zayden and Dean Young. Zach Zayden to lead out the first pass. Let's see if we can get a tidy battle between these two boys. 
Yeah, it's Zagzag to be on the left-hand side of the cones. That's the lead car side of the cones. Chase car obviously on the right. So we see Dean Young getting up to avoid the slingshot. Here we go, Zach Zayden accelerating into the section. Big handbrake initiation. Gets wide on the sweep with Dean, Dean Young in the pocket. Sitting there struggling a little bit, Dean Young in the chase. Zach Zayden being a little bit slower than he would think. Grabbing that out of clip, Dean Young doing a pretty good job up until that point. Commentator's curse. <laughs> Slight correction for uh, the drift antics driver, Zach Zayden, and he is well, well and truly off his, uh, off his clip. Coming through that section just prior to the hairpin, so I guess we'll look at that in the replay. Bit of a messy battle there. Yeah, messy it was. So we'll come through and uh, you can see both drivers holding good lock. You can see the slightly shallower angle, which is all about proximity for our chase driver. As we see the Zach Antics, Zach Zayden, and at this point here, he needed to bring the car a lot further up. We see a correction there, a lot further off. Now he's able to grab that clip, but... Yeah, there's the mistake from Dean Young there as they come out of, a, out of zone two. Hitting into three. A correction in the chase looks like Dean Young's car is quite gripped up in the chase. So you see the Braden Mare car, a bit of damage, fiberglass panel oh, wow. off that car. Exposes up all the bones at the back of these cars, these pro sport cars, radiator in the boot. As they head back down the straight here at Manfield Circuit, Chris Amon. And that is what the back of a competition drift car looks like. Braden Mears there. As we see Dean Young, we're up to the line. D1 Kim Thorley. She said maybe one more season of Trish South and then she's coming to the D1. But she has to do that if she does not both. Alright, let's see how this battle goes. It's Dean Young's turn to play leader. Zach Zayden will have to get into that chase position. Around the outside of the cones for our lead driver. Of course, that is determined by qualifying position. The first part of the battle will always be the high qualifier. And that 1.5 JC kicks himself into life and gets straight into action. Here we go, Dean Young doing a really good job on that sweeper. Zach Zayden with a little bit to catch up in proximity as he does throughout his own one. Now Dean Young creating another bit of a gap throughout his own two, out to three. It's a nice lead run from Dean Young. A lot better for Dean. What did Dean do when he was last here at Manfield? I think he borrowed a car. And what happened to that car? It got T-boned. It got T-boned. But now back in his car. Looking great, that Dean Young car. Let's see the replay. Well, Dale ITM bringing us the replays of all the action out here on track. And it was an aggressive uh, chase for Zach Zayden. Zach Zayden doing a good job through that first clip. And just losing a bit of proximity going up to OZ3. As they come to finish the lap. But Dean Young definitely an advantage on that lap. And it's now up to the judges to see how they're going to sway for that first pass. And there goes our amazing judges. So what have they got on their hands? That's how they deliberate and make the decision of who's going to go through. So you'll see them go, and you'll see Joel's obviously gone through. He's going to go and have a look at maybe what his results will say. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting They course. take a lot of notes. They have a look at different things like that. And then after that, they'll deliberate by sending the score through. Checking the replays. A lot of this decision will be weighing on that first pass and the mistake at OZ3 from Dean Young. Was it caused by Zach or did Dean do it all on his own? Here we go. There we go, Zach Zayden.
Sorry about the poor Albatross moves, mate. Uh, congr congratulations. Uh, good lead. Yeah, cheers, mate. Um, yeah, the weather's not really playing ball. It went from wet to dry, and uh, now we're just going to run with dry setup. Hopefully the weather gods play, uh, play ball with us. Don't complain about dry weather, mate. <laughs> yeah, it gets a bit hard, though, Steve. You know, Manu or two brings four seasons in uh, one day. Love it. Get in there. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And a shout out to Alex Seymour East, first ever D1NZ. Been down there with his dad, Aaron. Hope you're enjoying yourself here at the D1NZ as we get ready for our next battle of the day. That's on the left hand side of the tree. And this will be Braden Meir and Matt Kitto. This is their OMT battle there one more time. Yeah, let's see if we can get a tidier battle between these two. Braden Meir in the lead, left hand side of the cones with half an S14 into this battle. <laughs> half an S14, well, we'll see uh, which half is gonna take the win. Here we go, Braden, yeah, nice line on that sweeper. A little bit of trouble for Matt Cato in the chase there. He's missed that out of zone though as a lead car. So transitions out to OZ2, grabs that, switches up the hill, putting on a good lead run for the second half of this battle. Drag on the handbrake, settles the car down, powers through and will finish coming out of the hairpin on to the Denny Home straight here at Manfield Circuit. Chris Amon, well that was a much better lead. The uh, weather conditions are starting to play ball for the people that are here in the audience anyway and for the drivers. Big mistake to start for the uh, chase. It's a big correction that's going to ruin the lap. Big correction from Matt Kiddo there on the sweeper in his chase run. Well, man needed to do here, Braden Mir in the lead. He's finished this lap off to grab his points. As we see, that's exactly what he's done. I would say that's going to be a 10-0 advantage to Braden Mir. See those clouds rolling over, Steve? It looks like we're going to get some, some dry weather. You see, you see some whiteness see. on the left there. Riley MC is praying to the D1 gods for clear weather. I think we all are. Rightio, boys, round for their second pass. Let's see if we can get through the second pass and this battle without any more contact. Not many more panels can fall off the back of that Brad Mir car. I mean, if you want contact, you need to go to. Robinson Prestige International Speedway. I think they're supposed to be running tonight. See some super stock action before we come back for round four tomorrow here with the Repco D1NZ. Launchmaster Willie heads down into the cockpit. Looks like he's given the all clear for Matt Kato. Now this is the superstar of D1NZ. Well, we'll head down to the front straight, bring them around. Mekito on the lead, the dead side. Let's see what he can do. He's going to need to cause a mistake for Brady Mir. Brady Mir needs to put on a good chase run. As we said, a big gap being created. Brady Mir fr frying the tyres up on the initiation. Mekito in the lead. Is going to head off and Braden Mayer by himself. That's a very, very messy battle there, Steve. Don't know what's happened with Braden Mayer in the chase. Got absolutely left as they came around the separation cones. And Matt Katana's obviously spun it and created the 10 0 all on his own. Let's have a look at the uh, replay as they fire through into the section and it's big and wide because there's such a gap that's formed between the two drivers. One of them over rotates in the chase position from uh, yesterday and uh, here we go. Well, he tried to shorten it up by losing the rear end, now he's trying to shorten it up by... Uh... All fun and games, Ben, all fun and games. If, if that battle had actually finished, both boys had the spun. I think the judges would have been looking at Braden Mir there from the stake he made at the start. Here we go. Two to Braden Mir. One to Matt Kiddo. Huh? 
I, I sense relief. Yeah, I know that was pretty messy, but uh, glad we got there. And yeah, the card's pretty munted now, so I might as well try to take it all the way now. Try to beat it up. What, what total munt? Yeah. <laughs> so go, go have some fun and munt the car then. See what we can do. Great to be there, big smile on his face. He'll be going through the top 16. Well, let's see where uh, this battle here is going to be fun to watch. Well, I say it's going to be fun. Who We've had uh, some of the worst, worst driving we've seen in, in recent years today. Weather hasn't helped. Adam Whitehead, though, in the Plan B S14. He was a top qualifier yesterday with an 88.3. This is, I think now, the top 16, which is taken us just under a year to get there. <laughs> correct, correct. A couple of OMTs in there, Steve. They love those OMTs, but this is a good battle. Adam White here, talented driver, leading on first, leading Ryan Perry, who's driving this year as well. Two S14s, two well-presented S14 Suez. Should be a good one. Well, we'll have a look and see what's going to happen. 2JZ under the bonnet for that white S14. That's the first time running the 2JZ for Adam Whitehead. Says it's 600 horsepower. I think these guys are telling lies because I don't know many that aren't around 800 these days. But a fast start for Adam Whitehead from the lead position. Getting that Plan B White S14 humming out there. Wow, he's back that right in. Very aggressive switch there from Adam Whitehead in the, in the lead, but a bit of a correction and maybe an over rotation causing a mistake from Ryan Perry. As we see Adam Whitehead finishing it off. Bit of distance created between them. I think we need to go back replay and figure out that it might have made a are mistake. We, are we looking at the aggression of that switch coming through into splash? We definitely are. Ryan Perry sitting there in the pocket coming up to that switch and splash. Did Adam Whitehead over rotate? This Ryan Perry is incredibly close. So the judges want the touch and go there, bang bang. But aggressive switch. There is a correction in the, se in the steering, he has to open the steering up. Well, he comes through the finish. I think the rest of it's obviously pretty good, but the biggest issue is what happened at the start of that lap. Has that uh, caused any issues for Ryan Parry, or is that just what uh, the man who top qualified with an 88.3 yesterday is? We're going to have another... No, that's the uh, the side-by-side -side where they're... I still enjoy watching... Actually, I always enjoyed watching Bruce Tannock going down the back, back straight. Bruce Tannock loves a drag race down the back straight of Pukakaui and of... of that oh. circuit. I've, uh, I've been a mini of a drag race with, with Brucey. Yeah. I remember Brucey fight, uh, not fighting, having a fun discussion down at Teratonga when a couple of guys basically said, oh, look at this crappy thing. And he said, what are you into? He said, oh, we've got Porsches. And he said, I'll race you for my car that I can beat you down the straight. The guy says, no chance at all. He says, well, I've got 900 horsepower and grip and you're at about 450. There is no way I can't beat you. So do you want to, shall we race some papers? I've seen, seen those guys at many an event come up and go, we love these things here. And it was all because <laughs> I blame Bruce Tannock for opening their eyes. But let's have a look at the second half of their battle as we go down and get to the hands of Launchmaster Willie. And it is grabbing gears down the front straight here at Manfield for Circuit Chris Amon, car 21. Adam Whitehead, he uh, had a good lead, might have been uh, given a bit of an exception to that from the first entry. Now it's time for him to play chase with Ryan Perry. Let's see what Ryan Perry can do in the lead run here as they swap over. Nice smooth initiation, Adam Whitehead just moving up into the pocket, trying to get close to proximity to Ryan Perry. As we see Whitehead going wide. Wow, he's able to actually maintain the drift. That was a big thing with that wide push. But it comes down to mistakes, and it's going to come down to who makes the best, the, the worst of them. Maybe knock on his door, you'll get extra points for that. And we're going to have to go back on this pass. Same case as the first bit of Steve. There's a mistake being made in the first switch out of zone one. And that is the most crucial part of the track. Here we go, Ryan Perry wavering on his entry. We can sort of get blocked up by that Marshall box. We're going to need to see another angle there if we can to oh. figure out. So Ryan Perry definitely filled those, uh, the outer zones that he needed to do. But he's allowed a slingshot at that point there and come down, so. And we know that the blue cones at the end are not the finishing line, it's actually the link flags, so. 
Hello, team. It's all right, put your phone down. It's all right, we can't see you. You're like John Cena, we can't see you. All right, yeah, another replay. Another replay. Ryan Perry being a little bit shallow. Here's the angle we needed to see. No, he's smooth through there. He's off throttle. He's off throttle. Is it right, a Ryan zone? Perry, I don't think there is a decel zone on this. I, think, I thought it was just motor through. Like that touch and go is about the only place you could actually relatively call a decel zone. We can definitely tell that Ryan Perry is off throttle. There is no smoke. There was a few the hand, hand signals coming out of the hairpin as well. Well. And uh, the decision has been made. Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, strike in favor, favor of Adam Whitehead. One strike to Ryan Perry, but it's going to be enough that Adam Whitehead takes the win. Uh, the aggression in that first run. Wow. Oh, mate, I'm still shaking. That was crazy. Yeah. I had to throw it down in the lead run because I knew Ryan would be pretty close to me. So, yeah, that was. Oh, I'm still actually shaking. So, that, that was crazy. Hopefully, we can keep going on. What happened in the chase? Uh, there's just a lot of grip. There's just a lot of grip. And it's all dry now. Manfield's a great track. It's, it's um, definitely uh, tests our car's limits, that's for sure. And um, yeah, we we're, were real close. Sketchy, but we can improve. Top qualify, no pressure. Uh, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. I love it. Just uh, you're the top qualifier. Um, what, they're talking about so much grip. What, what are they meaning by that? Well, just before their battles, their last practice was in the wet. I don't know if a lot of these cars are still running their wet setup, their wet tyre pressure, their suspension, their alignment, however they adjust their car for the different weather conditions. We are seeing these cars, a lot of these pro sport cars are gripped up, but in saying that, they are on a 235 street radio, and a lot of these cars are 7, 800 horsepower, 6, 7, 800 horsepower. Yep. So surely they'd be able to drive through through that, but the, I guess the mind is, is all there for either a rain setup or a different way they, uh, they well. have their car set up, so, yeah. All right, well, uh, we'll go down and see what's going to happen in this battle. This is on the left-hand side of the tree. In the top 16, it's Justin Patterson in the MTF Finance Cambridge Nissan S13. Going up against Daniel Smith in the RB-powered 13.5. Digger Dan in the Torque Performance Development DK Smith Excavation S14.5. 2J versus RB. Daniel Smith, he starts early. Daniel Smith with an early initiation on that sweeper. Definitely a difference in speed of these two cars. Justin Patterson doing what he needs to do in the lead here, grabbing out his own two. Slightly off, and we've seen a spin. We've seen a spin. Shut it down. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't laughing at all the terrible driving we're seeing today that we're going to blame the weather on and uh wet setups on a dry track ruthless dude ruthless it's all right i'll make sure i mention every one of their sponsors including mtf finance cambridge here we go let's see where it went wrong for justin patterson he grabs out his own one gets through splash just gets to the edge of oz2 and as he's switching to go up to three it's all over is he done just jumped on the lock stops or something i don't know that just Unless it, the car cut out or bent a tie rod, something something odd's gone on in the Patterson car to cause that erratic spin. The lead. Electrics, always blame the electrics. Can't it be too bad because they've lined back up again. Off we go. Daniel Smith. Maybe we don't say a single thing so we don't jinx him so we can actually see a result. Come on, Digger Dan, or let's go, Justin Patterson. Daniel Smith in the lead, this obviously swapped over. All Daniel needs to do is get through the section, finish it off, get some points, and be heading in through to the top eight. Please finish the lap. Second run, the second half of the battle, top 16. And it is DK Smith, the excavation. Daniel Smith, no, no, no. What are you doing? I don't know what's going on here, Steve. I don't know what's going on. And the chase driver does not have to complete the laps, so we're going one more time. Yay, so result is one more time. Let's get the next battle out. Cut off them. Let's find someone else to see. It'll be Sam Rawson versus uh, Braden Mir, may Mir maybe. Uh, Kesuke Nag Nagashima versus Aiden Daly. Oh, OK, we've got to watch a replay first. Of... Here we go. Where does it go all wrong for Daniel Smith? Grabs that zone nicely. Just leaves it too late, but it looks like he's off throttle. 
straight away out of that zone where he should be full throttle to get himself through to OZ2. He's off throttle. Justin Patterson finishing the lap off, even though he doesn't need to. He's been gifted. He's been gifted. A lifeline. A lifeline. A rerun here, Justin Patterson. He can come back and have another go at it. So, of course, we're live on Sky Sport at 2.30 this afternoon. So we'll be cutting off Facebook and uh, moving over to Sky. If you're uh, joining us from Australia, you can catch us on Fox Sport and KO as well, as well as the team at Motorsport TV. Talk performance developments. One more time. Yeah, but it has Steve. to be. One We're, more time. Uh, is it, we haven't had it confirmed yet, but yes, it is. It's now confirmed. All right, send them. Get out. Now, um, what was that book back in the day uh, that was going around yes, uh, last year and the season before? Was it ABC Drift Kits? And I think that is a full Bible on how to drift. So if we can just go out there and get those out so um, and we can work out. I mean, right now, I think I could win a battle. Definitely been some inter interesting battles. Do you know how many times I've drifted in my life myself? What? Nuns. <laughs> Nuns. <laughs> Go next battle up. What have we got coming through? Zach Zayden and uh, Luke Chimsayer. Anyone who writes OMT on the uh, on the footage, I'm happy to sad react it. <laughs> Righty, yo, here we go. Zach Zayden in the lead. Luke in the V8 powered Sephiro in the chase. And shout out to Pete Driver, ABC Drift for Kids, Pro Sports new book this uh, weekend. Teach him how to drift. Let's see if we can get a clean battle. B is for battle. C is for come on, let's not have an OMT. Well, it is uh, the greatest moustache in the D1NZ, Sam Rawson. It's not. Zach Zayden in the lead here with Luke Chibosuya. As we see Zach accelerating, big gap created already as he initiates into the sweeper. Smooth and wide arc there from Zach. He's doing what he needs to do. Some, definitely some mess, messy driving behind from Luke. Zach Zayden just needs to finish this off to grab a 10 0 advantage. Can he finish the lap as he gets out? Nowhere near out of zone two. All he is doing is finishing off the lap to grab those points. All over on the sweeper for Luke Chippel. As we see the replay here, Zach Zayden doing what he needs to do in the lead. Luke, the very straight line in the chase, doing it all on his own, no mistake from him in front. And in turn, hands it to Zach Zayden. All he needs to do is finish the section to grab himself 10 points and move on with a heavy advantage into the second pass. Next battle lined up after this run. Braden, Sam Rawson, Braden Mayer, sitting there waiting for their turn. Oh, there he is. There's Sam over there. Looking forward to that battle. It's going to be a good battle. As we see the boys come around for their second pass. Luke Chapasoya. Zach Zayden with a heavy advantage to Zach Zayden. 10-0 advantage. So go down to launch Master Willie. Let's see what he's gonna say. Launch Master Willie letting them go. Zach Zayden in the chase. They stop around. Luke in the lead. V8 powered A31 Safira. Luke's going to have to put on a pretty stellar lead run here to try and claw some points back. And Zach Zayden's going to need to make a mistake in the chase run. Here we go.
Big gap being created already. It's Luke Fizen on the sweep of Zach Zayden. Oh, God. In the chase. Mistake there from Luke in the front. Very slow, and he's pulling out. Zach Zayden, all he needs to do here is shut it off, and he'll be going through without making any contact or risking the vehicle as we see Luke spinning it out. And that would be Zach Zayden going through into the top eight. This is... Uh don't know how to put it. Is there a way of actually saying something? I mean, when drivers are doing nothing but practicing in rain and things like that, there's a massive jump between that and the grip of a, of a dry track? Definitely is. But uh, we saw yesterday the, the Pro Sports putting it down some pretty damn good laps there. The qualifying for the conditions was pretty good. We thought the, 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 the Pro could have been a little bit better. The Pro Sport driving was almost better than the Pro yesterday, or was. And now today, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a different show of driving to what we saw in qualifying. Next battle up. These boys looking forward to this battle. Sam Rousen, he went straight through to the 16 with that bye in the top 32. A great drive yesterday in that Laurel, that C33 Laurel, Sam Rousen. Some of the better laps we saw in qualifying. Well, I mean, we, uh, everyone drove superbly in qualifying as well. We didn't have uh, very many uh, one-point runs. So I think we've actually got a battle on track. So uh, Zach Zayden's going to take the win, and I think jump through to this battle. Here yeah, we there go. we go. Looking forward for it. Let's go. Sam Rousen in the lead on the left-hand side of the cones. Brady Mayer in the chase with that half of an S14. Brady Mayer getting the grip out of the line that he needed to initiate early in the chase run for the lead run, but great looking sweeper from Sam Rousen. Come on, Sam. Brady oh. Mayer, there we go. We've, we've had contact. Was the Contact caused by the lead car being off throttle. We're going to need to go back uh -huh, and have okay, a look at that. Yeah, let's look at that. It's, it's the things that we sort of don't think about. So, look, look to me, Braden Mir was on the brakes for a long time. So, we need to go back and have a look who's at fault. Judges will be having a look, checking a replay. Here's the replay now. We see Sam Rousen, great initiation. Great sweeper, good line. As he flicks, we see tire smoke disappears. He's off throttle. He's just got back on the throttle, but is it too late? And is that the reasoning? But was Sam Rousen going to go off on his own anyway? Oh, so sorry. Somebody must have texted me something because I was uh, just laughing. Funny joke, maybe. I don't know. Tell you this isn't fun today. So we've seen uh, some of the. This is the worst driving I've seen in the D1NZ Pro Sport Championship in, uh, what, how long have I been part of it? 12 years? Long time, yeah. What and goes bad wrong? driving is bad. What goes wrong here? You can see the rear wheels of Braden Mir locked up for a long time and then makes contact with the back of that C33 Laurel. Uh, Sam Rousen, I think, has slowed down a lot and it's caused that contact, but I'm pretty sure Sam Rousen was going to go off on his own. See the judges having a look at the replay before the next run to see who was at fault. Yeah, Willie giving some loud instructions down there to the two drivers on the grid. Um, and if he could pass on, stay on the track, keep sideways. All right, well, uh, let's see what can go wrong this time. Braden Mayer, Sam Rawson, come on, let's go. Let's see if we can get a clean run in from these boys. As we see Braden Mayer taking the left-hand side of the cones. Sam Rawson needs to put on a bit of a stellar chase here. Braden Mayer flicks in, Sam Rawson in the chase. Both on quite a good line around the sweeper. Bit of a gap being created with Braden Mir. Nowhere near that zone that he needs to be as he switches to get. And we've oh, had a car no, turn just... off. Better shut down. 
Are we going to get a completed lap? Yes, are we, we going to get a completed lap today? Hopefully. Um, award Pro Sport off their qualifying positions yesterday, and we'll get that. I just don't know. Who's enjoying yourselves? Who thinks that we're going to get a clean run today? Let us know in the comments, uh, of course, on YouTube and on Facebook. Braden Mayer there just off that outer zone one as he switched through to, to get two, but then the, the car looks, looks to either straighten or shut down during the transition after OZ2. Sam Rousen spinning out on his own at the end of that run. So technically, are we going to see... Well, it all depends on the contact. How do the judges see the contact in run one? Who's at fault for that contact? And that'll in turn... Oh, good point. Figure out if it's going to be a 10-0 to Sam Rousen in the, in the first run, and in turn it will be a 10-0 to Sam Rousen in the second run. Please have a result. <laughs> it's an OMT! This is just God punishing me. Okay, so this is, uh, oh, this is just a, I don't know. Oh, this is the OMT between neither of these two people. We'll just scratch that off screen. And, uh, okay, let's go with Justin Patterson right, in boys. the MTF Finance Cambridge S13. Let's see if and we can get it. it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right here, Justin Patterson in the lead there. Nice line around the sweep. It is great to touch and go. Dan Smith doing a good job in the chase there. You see Justin switching. Grabs out his own two. Heads on up to three. A little bit off three. Could have pushed a little bit wider there. As he flicks into the last zone. Digger Dan having a straighten into that last oh, turn. A correction, because we correction. need it for the next lap. Radio. Radio. <laughs> it was a correction and a heavy points deduction. Well, they made it through. They made it through the lap. Okay, both drivers made it through the lap, which means that if I'm makes a mistake in the next run, we can have a result. Justin Patterson, he's in the black. S13. Justin Patterson doing a good job in the lead there. Daniel Smith getting his close here, playing a bit of catch up. And a little minor steering correction there. Final turn. Final turn for DK Smith. How are the judges going to see that? It's been an interesting call. Well, at least there's a couple of people enjoying themselves out here today. And I can tell you that no matter what, every single one of these drivers enjoys getting out there and, uh, and, and throwing their cars around. That's for sure. That's for sure. It's a good track to... Even a bad drift is still a drift. That's it. And that's good. That's it. OK. All right, well, we're going to go through to the second half of the battle, and it's just going to get better. So these boys can do as they switch over. Daniel Smith in the lead run. And that very well presented. Daniel Lynham S13. Shout out to Daniel Lynham and the team down there and uh, Digger Dan's crew. Daniel Lynham, as you mentioned, also the owner of the car. Well, let's grab some gears and get ourselves into action. Daniel Smith has turned to play leader in this battle to get a spot in the top eight. But Daniel Smith had a nice initiation there. As he's left out of zone one, he's made a mistake, which might have caused Justin Patterson to be offline there. Patterson really trying to close up the gap between himself as they come into the hairpin. You can see him really arc off, and that's going to be... Oh, how was that? Not contact. Hold on to that lap there. Yes. That's Daniel Smith. a result. Daniel Smith finishing it off. We're that's not, a result. We're not going to see an OMT this time, Steve. As you see the replay here, Daniel Smith, nice arc, nice commitment. A lot of throttle on the sweeper, gets into that touch and go. Probably a little early into the zone, which then in turn set him up. Not great for the rest of that splash corner. He grabbed that zone two, head up to three, a little bit shallow on three. 
As we see Daniel heading into the final corner here, grabs down in the zone. And Justin Patterson, I don't know what's gone wrong there. I'd say, looking at the so battle he, four, he might have had a steering issue. Sort of tried to back it in. So he came in a little bit earlier into... Uh, he came, came in a little bit earlier into the hairpin. And I don't know, maybe that's part of what happened. So we see these lads transiting back round into the pit lane to grab the result. Okay, the judges are currently looking at their judges' replay system, and after that, we'll determine. So you see them looking out, and uh, I'd say that Andrew's possibly uh, made his decision because he, he doesn't care anymore. Joe Counter just watching one last piece of the action so he can make that decision. I would say they'll be looking back at the replay for run one with Daniel Smith's correction in the final turn. I would say that's what they're looking at in that replay. The second pass, obviously, we saw Justin Patterson with the mistake at the end of the at the end of the clip. Sorry about that, mate. Judges, you know, fingers in certain places, but I congratulations. Making lunch. <laughs> Not the best run, really, Not across the, the board, right? It wasn't no, no. Re Rerun those. We got a second go at it, and obviously just managed to make it through. They're obviously thinking pretty hard, but we got it. We get to keep going. That's what it's all about, right? It is. Too right it is. Get to keep going. Get going. That's it. Well, we'll get, we are going to keep on going, and we're going to get straight back into it. Now, this man here qualified yesterday in second position, so he will lead them out in one of the coolest cars in the D1 NZ Pro Sport Championship with an 83.7 yesterday. This is Kesuke Nagashima. He's going to be going up against Aiden Daly. Aiden Daly out of Tauranga versus Kesuke in the 86 Fighters, the 86 Fighters machine, and he'll be fighting his way at the front. Very aggressive initiation there from Kesuke. You see him weight shift into the sweeper. A lot of speed from that little lead. Aiden, Aiden Daly doing a nice job in the chase run, Steve. Well, let's talk about holding on to the drift for Kesuke Nagashima as he gets down and puts the foot down. He really needs to obviously hold on to it. And that little 86 is just dancing its way around the track here at Manfield. He comes through and finishes the lap off, goes past the yellow printed line, and then off he goes down this mid straight. A clean lap by Kesuke, a 10-0 advantage. What happened here for Aiden Daly? As we see this replay here, here's where it all goes wrong for Aiden Deli. Just about to clip the back left corner of Kesuke's beautiful A86. And maybe just pulling out to avoid the contact. But a, a clinical lead run here from Kesuke. Doing what he needs to do. Finish, finishing the lap off, grabbing a whole bag of points. A 10-0 advantage. But that was a really, really nice lead run from Kesuke. So we're going to watch this one here one more time. This is a different angle. And I think we're going to look at... The same thing that you might have mentioned, no smoke coming off the back end of the lead car. Yeah, OK, OK. Scotty Dinsdales, he's uh, entered the chat. He said, um, hey, maybe, Steve, you could put you in a drift car so we can all tell you how terrible you are. Couldn't agree more. But apart from you wouldn't need the drift car. So uh, there goes our amazing judges, the first ever D1NZ DK, which is JT Farido, Andrew Redwood. Now Angle King and one of the hardest battlers out of the South Island Joel Counter. We're going to go back to the second half of the battle. Swapping about <laughs> Aiden Daly. Aiden Daly in the lead run, left hand side, Kiske. So this is going to be an aggressive chase from Kiske. The little 86 fighters A86. Yeah. 
So we're holding cars at the moment from releasing them again. I think the judges just obviously trying to deliberate again on possibly the same thing as what you mentioned before, which is... Definitely looks like the judges are deep in a replay, checking out to see if Keske was off throttle and making a decision whether that was the, the, the cause for Aiden Delhi. And it looks like the decision wow. has been made. So what we've got with the D1NZ this season here is a DSO system. So we uh, send all of the different camera angles up to the judges. They generally watch what we're watching right now, but when it comes down to it, they can ask for specific uh, camera angles, such as the drone, the overheads, uh, when we're running them, even an in-car camera at the times required. Well, Aiden, you might have some work to do. Keske, you may already be in trouble. We're not a judge. It's not up to us to decide. Let's see what the RHP Rita Harrison performance. Wow, that was a sort of an interesting transition into drift for Aiden Daly. Aiden Daly is struggling there on the sweeper uh, to initiate that car. And in turn has, has made a bit of an error, but Keske doing a great job in the chase run here, considering the, uh, the mistakes at the start of the section as they finish off here. Keske Nagashima, of course, our round one winner in Taupo, his first ever round win in the Pro Sport Championship. And a really cool video that him and the team put out, which can be caught up on uh, the 86 Fighters page. That's it, Keske is a, is a very talented driver, a lot of driving around the world, as we see the replay here. Aiden Daly just off throttle into that splash corner. Keske doing a very good job in the chase to allow for that and to keep within drift so that's a good chase run guess game considering what happened in front of him so transit back round to steve to get their decision well carl bats is a shout out to dale itm for these fire replays uh, absolutely always a shout out to the team from dale itm not just behind us, but the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. They've done, was it, six rounds across Aotearoa over December through to, it didn't seem like it would ever finish. And uh, now we're into the D1NZ. Well, it comes down to Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and JT Farido, and every strike goes in the way of Keske Nagashima. So you won, win round one. Uh, there's a funny feeling going through my guts that maybe this could be a big day for you. Yeah, I have a funny feeling in my gut too, mate. So, yeah, maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, it is a good day for me. What did we eat for breakfast this morning? Uh, I had a bacon bat, so that's probably what's going through me right now. <laughs> but a little bit of adrenaline too. No, it's pretty good. Look good, mate. Let's yeah, go have a quick chat to Aiden. Ah, uh, she's a tough day out there today, mate. That first run, eh? What happened? Ah, uh, came in a little bit too hot and the story was right there, so I was like a bit... Oh shit, had to go onto the grass. Um, but you know, Keske is a bloody good fella, bloody good driver. Um, glad to go out by him and let's just hope he takes it all the way. You know, mate, never be afraid to come in hot. Oh, sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Well done, mate. Sweet, thanks, Eve. <laughs> Aiden's still got a smile on his face. Great to have Aiden in the RHP team. Of course, himself, his brother Clayton in the Pro Championship. But before Pro, Go. So we start with the pro sport. This man here who leads the championship, didn't have the qualifying result he probably wanted yesterday, but well, he's in a position to continue today, and that is Daniel Edwards. They're two very good drivers here, Matty J. Done a lot of driving in the pro sport. Daniel Edwards up and comer. Obviously, Hampton Downs winner as well. This should be a good battle from these boys. Matty J qualified in seventh position yesterday, giving himself a pass into the top eight, uh, top 16, sorry. And uh, we are still waiting to fill a couple more spots. So we're on the right-hand side of the tree right now, Matty J in that immaculate Nissan S13. Psycho Jay-Z and the 180, which is equally stunning, of Daniel Edwards. Well, let's see how they go as they come out of Twerda. They'll accelerate down the straight here and kick themselves into action. Separation between the two of them and body panels flying, and they'll set themselves up to dive through into splash and dive. Here goes Daniel Edwards, and that is a four wheel off dive and a advantage directly to the uh, to the lead runner. Of course, being in the front, he is going to have to finish the section. And Matty J is a reason why he qualified where he was because he's a great drifter, and finish is what he'll do. Yeah, Matty J, I don't know if he's got a spotter in his ear or not, but normally if he had a spotter, then sitting up in the judge's tower or next to the judge's tower he'd be telling you to finish the lap i know my guy tom he'd be hard in my ear telling me to finish it 
take no risks to finish the laps. Here we go. Where did it go all wrong? Danny Edwards just looks like he dry, tries to drive up onto that door of Matty J. I don't think there's anything going on with Matty J slowing up on the exit of Splash there to cause that issue from Danny Edwards. Well, I mean, we look at the smoke and stuff coming through. We want to see it coming off the rear tyre to ensure that the uh, the lead driver is on a, is accelerating. So we're going to have a look at this point here. That's you it. see a body panel fly off. That did absolutely nothing to change anything. And as you see the switch, no. Wow. He is off throttle. It looks to me he's off throttle for quite some time. But Dan Edwards is coming in with a rate of knots into that corner. Interesting call. Don't want to be a judge today, tell you that. I don't want to be sitting in that judge's box today. Well, the, uh, the crew have gone through and grabbed all those uh, pieces of fiberglass. And that's the role you want to be. You want to own a fiberglass company because today they will be making a lot of money. Fiberglass going everywhere, that Brad Mir car. Missing a few panels. Matty J losing a side skirt on the sweeper there. An Origin, Origin Racing Line side skirt. Well, it goes down to the hands of Launch Master Woolly, and off we go. So, again, let's uh, send them out. Daniel Edwards will lead out. We know that he is potentially at a 10 0 disadvantage. And what Matty J's come up and given him a bit of a, an SVG. <laughs> Bit of a bump draft, maybe. Here we go. Daniel Edwards going to have to put on a stellar lead run here as he initiates. Very aggressively. Lots of angle. Nice and smooth. Matty J just creeping up to try and get into that pocket. Edwards Good nails there out of zone one. And he's going to be off the track. Oh, he waved at him going past. Matty J Matty giving him a J little wave. waved at him. <laughs> That's possibly the greatest thing I've seen today. <laughs> Well, he comes through and he finishes his lap. He didn't have to finish, and that's going to be enough. But, I mean, if that's not something for the highlights reel. <laughs> I mean, if you think my bird earlier was bad, I think Matty J's just gone up and done an even better one. Let's have a look at this replay. Replay here with Daniel Edwards. Let's see where it went wrong. Nice sweeper, but he just gets through that outer zone and leaves it way too late. On the throttle, way too late. Puts him on a, a wide arc, and he ends up four wheels off <laughs> on the other side of out of the zone too. Just keep your hands on the steering wheel and finish this section. He didn't need to actually because the lead car went off. Yeah, man. Oh, savage. Matty J finishing the section, grabbing a 10 0, 10 0 advantage. He should be moving through to verse Kesuke Nagashima in the top eight. To me, this is a clear cut OMT. Let's go again. Unfortunately for Daniel Edwards, it's going to have some implications on his championship, Steve. We need to talk about championship. Oh, yes, he is. So that, so if he gets knocked out in the 16, and oh, we'll find some information. Bring up that championship so we can figure it out, eh? Daniel Edwards, he was leading the championship coming into round three. The great result, round two. Kesuke Nagashima moving forward, sitting in second place in the championship, has moved forward to the top eight. Judge with the decision. One, two, three, Matty J. We talk about aggression. I love aggression. They were thinking of docking your points for the wave bust. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's a hard competitor to beat, eh? So, you know, props to him. Um, glad to get the win. There's a few mistakes in there I made though, um, so we'll try and tidy them up and um, move on to the next one. But yeah, yeah, props to the bro. Um, yeah, he's a great driver and um, yeah, let's do it. All right, mate, well done. Matty J. Goshu and Daniel was, of course, our championship leader going into this one. Uh, that's that's a game changer as far as championship goes. Uh, what went down? Come on, I know you're grumpy. No, I don't know. It's just slippery in the rear. Something's going on. We, I don't know if we got it set up wrong or it's not our day. It's not our day. But we'll come back strong tomorrow. You put it in gear, you don't want to talk anymore, do you? Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's definitely characters. They're not even the greatest of days for some of them, but I tell you what, there's still another day to come, and we don't often get to say that in the D1NZ. Of course, we are back-to-back -back this weekend, round number three today, round number four tomorrow, and we will see the best of New Zealand drifting in the Pro Sport and the Pro Championship taking on the challenging Manfield Circuit. Chris Amon. Well, it's time to welcome our second of our Southern drivers out of the VIP camp. 
and Rody knows as well. Little Corbel on that wild S15 with the big V8 under the bonnet. DC certainly uh, comes to grips very quickly with the D1NZ. VIP frames and truss on the doors of that beautifully presented S15. He's got Rody Knowles in the MTF Finance Cambridge. Little yellow S13. Through to where do they go? Let's see how these boys go on the lead up. Rody Knowles not giving him too much of a gap. DC about to initiate. And it's a great job as well. Nice smooth arc, slight correction to go and bring that nose back down to the touch and go. And then he is on the loud pedal. Rody continues, and finally somebody took out the Grieve Insurance badge. Mark Ballard, if you're watching at home, you'll be happy to see that. Rody now is finishing the lap off. He doesn't actually need to finish the lap off. The lead car has 10 0, has zeroed out. He can shut it down, but he finishes the lap off. So but you tell Drifter not to drift, and that's it. I don't know what's going on here, Steve. We've just seen it. Lead cars of the last battles fire straight off. So what do we see with DC here? He gets on the throttle and it doesn't drive forward. Doing a bit of mowing from Enfield Park. Grabbing a, a sponsorship. Absolutely. So better on this way out for a good cause. But don't forget anything that's been taken out today is going to be un unwound tomorrow as we rewind and flip the switch and grab the grip and off we go in the opposite direction. This is the Daylight here replay. So of course we are on Facebook today up until about two o'clock and then we switch to our Sky Sport coverage. One of the few championships across the world that broadcasts live on network television. Daniel Caldwell there, DC firing off he was so far off the track I wonder what's going wrong has he missed the setup is it grip is it slippery is there something on the track down there we just saw before Danny um, Edwards two that's laps. a very good point because I haven't seen off. anything that's slippery without a huge shout out to the team from Manawa 2 Car Club of course uh, and, and also Hokey and the team the wind starting to pick up. Big deficit here to DC. It's going to need to force an error. Out of Rody Knowles. All Rody Knowles needs to do here is get through this lap, complete this lap, get some points. And he'll be moving on. Let's see what DC can do in the chase. He's an aggressive driver. So they'll come through and accelerate through. And don't forget when we do switch to Sky Sport at 2 p.m., those in Australia, you will not miss out onto Fox Sport and KO. So you can not miss out on any of the D1NZ action. As we see Rody Knowles switch ahead through Splash. Daniel Cool will getting it wrong again through Splash. Do we think maybe there's a setup issue in the car? Or I mean is, is it come back to what you mentioned maybe earlier on that the car has been everything's been set up for a wet setup? They've had time. This is at the latter part of the, uh, so they would have been able to set the car up, but reset the car between the top six, uh, top 24 battle and the top 16. I don't really know what's going on. Do you think if DC was set up for the wet, he'd have a bit more grip? But here's the replay, Dale and team re replay, watching Rody Knowles doing what he needs to do in the lead run to finish the lap off. And then DC just, unfortunately, another two wheels off. That's going to be a 10 0, 10 0 to Rody Knowles to move on. Brody actually putting on a, a very nice lead run there, reverting back to his qualifying line. If DC had been able to keep up after the wheels off, he could have been able to do a pretty nice chase run, I'd say, there from Rodinell's giving him a good lead. Well, still a few, uh, a few angles to watch for our judges. And uh, DC. Definitely going to be a tough day in the office for the judges. It already has been, and we're only halfway through for a sports team. Continuing the fight. I think the judges are looking at a replay of the first part of that second pass. Rody Knowles was quite shallow on the sweeper. Well, let's have a look and see where we've got to. So, at the moment, we've gone through the link top 16. We're starting to find our spots in the Mimico top eight. Adam Whitehead and Zach Zayden certainly grabbed a spot with Daniel Smith. Another one, but he's got to go through a... Uh, whoever wins the OMT between, between Sam Rawson and Braden Mir. Kesuke Nagashima going up against Matty Jane. Who's going to take the next spot into the Mimico top eight? I guess we're going to find out. This is the top 16 at the moment. It's DC versus Rody Noel. One, two, three strikes. Rody Noel will go through to the next round. 
You may not have seen inside the car, but uh, Brody is incredibly pumped about that. I've got to say, on the chase, you got a little aggressive going in before the initiation. Was that the plan? Yeah, hard out. That was definitely the plan. We um, we knew they were going to be fast in that car, so yeah, it was just a matter of actually being on the door and trying to make it happen. How hard was it just to play the percentage lead run? Uh, yeah, it was real tricky. Nick was in my ear saying, you're just going to have to be clean and you're just going to have to do the business and sort of, it's quite a bit of pressure even though the pressure was kind of off a little bit too, so. The yellow submarine's rolling, keep it going. Yeah, MT Finance Cambridge, baby. All right, well, let's uh, see who is, who's going to find the next spot in the eight. And this was one of my favourite drivers out here in the D. Jason Wu, the triple five. This is a E92 Eurofighter with an LS, uh, a Monster LS, Monster LS3 under the bonnet. Isaac Orridge, it's a battle of the BMWs right now. Jason Wu, nice initiation there. Isaac Orridge getting in the pocket. Two BMWs. So they'll come through and they'll switch coming up. Now, this is a place where many drivers have just got it wrong, but these two have kept it on track, and that's what we like to see. Jason Moon putting on a great lead run here, grabbing all the zones as he needs to, switching up into the final zone, oh, and it's commentator's curse. He's well, popped a wheel off. He's kind of, he may have led off all, all ridges, all ridges. well. Uh, we'll see in the replays. So he's just caught up in... It's probably the first time we've seen a couple of BMWs face off together since uh, we've started here in the D1NZ. Of course, this is uh, season number 21, and we're coming through this uh, through Splash, and we'll come through and see what happens as we head down to the hairpin, Ben. Jason grabs nicely out of zone two there, heads up to three, gets three nicely as well, just sitting into the final corner, the last zone that he needs to be critical on. He drops that wheel, which in turn looks like it's led Isaac Aldridge off the track also. So... Judges will be having a look at that. As they switch off, switch round for Isaac to lead. Well, we'll pick up the, uh, so those cones will indicate to the drivers where the outer zones are. See them. And we'll see them side by side shortly to go up and see battle it out for the second half of the battle. So of course this is the Repco D1NZ and when we talk about Repco we think about something that's going to be happening very very soon in Topol International Motorsport Park as the V8 Supercars will be heading into town. You can check it all out on Sky Sport. Watch your favourite driver. But while we see that it's time to bring out the second half of the battle, the battle of the BMWs. The Bavarian boys will go out and see, is Jason Wu going to take this one here? Can Isaac Orridge find what is required to take the win? It is Drift Direct on the door and D-Spec. Drift Academy. Sky's out looking after Jason Wu. Yeah, nice initiation there from Isaac Aldridge. There's a bit of a gap being created already. Jason Wu, a little bit of catching up to do as Isaac grabs out of zone one, grabs out of zone two. Oh, a big top wrench track. Chase driver at that point Rex. here as they come in. As we see him finish off the track, Jason Moon is having a tough time oh, in the four. chase. So that was one wheel, two wheels, three foot wheels, and all. So I actually was looking at that one coming through just before the hairpin, and I actually thought to myself that there's a possible straight line. So the four wheels got him in the end. Let's have a look and see what happens as we come through the S. Isaac Aldridge doing a good job in the lead run there, grabbing his zones. There. Jason Wood is having a tough time in the chase, but unfortunately, he's put four wheels off in this last section. But there goes one, more. there goes two, there goes three, and as we fly over the top with George, we see the fourth. One wheel off is a minor points deduction, two wheels off is major, anything more than that, and essentially your battle is over. Jason Wu, one of the... He has continued to impress me, though, every time he's been out. He's been in the series now for maybe three or four seasons, and each time I've talked about it, he's just got two points better, two points better. Now we're seeing him pumping in solid 80s to 90s from a starting point of 40. That's it, Jason Wu used to campaign the LS-powered S14. Boss body kit on it. Now into the E92 Eurofighter. It looks like he's a lot more at home driving that car as we saw at Hamden Downs.
I've pumped, I've uh, gone down and had a chat to Jason quite a few times over the weekend so far and just said, how's it going? How are you feeling? Is this a new car, Steve? It's a new car, but I'm it's definitely enjoying it. And one, two, three strikes, Isaac Orridge. He's got to dry. He's going to go through the next round. Okay, yep, saw a little bit of uh, the, the inner, inner field there. Is there a little bit? Yeah, drop, just a little bit. Dropped a bit of tyre just on that first chase lap, just coming into that last corner, but um, managed to hold on to it, so that was the main thing. Did you have a sense that you just needed to play it safe for the, the lead? Uh, nah, I, um, I felt like I did a pretty good chase, but always got to push. Jason's a great driver and a great friend, and uh, we love going up against each other. It's always a great close battle, so always got to push. You're moving on. Cheers, man. Well done. I'll just have a quick chat to Jason. Whoa. Settle down. Settle down. Mate, he's gone through. You didn't get through, but, mate, uh, just pretty to watch two beamers have a crack at each other. Oh, yeah, that's nice, but I did my best, yeah. What, what happened out there? Uh, he's just a good driver. Am I still learning the car? It's a new car for me. So, yeah, hopefully I'll do better next round tomorrow. Mate, I'm loving watching. You keep learning because look, it looks good watching you learn. Car's good, car's good, yeah. <laughs> I did my best. Well done, buddy. Well done. How good. How good a right. I just love to hear the positivity in Jason Wu's voice. The positivity, definitely. It's great to see such a humble man there. Oh, wow. Look, check out the old uh, lights over the hill there, the, the colour and discoloration out there. Is that an aurora? I don't know. That's pretty. That's all that is. <laughs> if I could say what my director's saying, I mean, I don't know any words bigger than wheelbarrow. <laughs> aurora something or other. Psychedelic, anyway. Rightio. Yeah, we'll leave you to that, Steve, as we move on. Into what have we got next? Might be a rerun between Sam Ralston and Brayden Mir coming up. Well, that's what we like to see. We like to see the kids enjoy themselves, and I tell you one place you certainly can enjoy yourself, that is at the final round in Tauranga as we head to my home, our director's home. It is, of course, Bay Park. Let's check it out. D1 International Drifting Championship is heading to Tauranga for the grand finale of the 2024 season. 50 of New Zealand's best sideways masters take on New Zealand's House of Drift, the concrete jungle of Bay Park Stadium, in a two-night electrifying motorsport showcase which crowns a champion. An atmosphere like no other with high horsepower, drifting battles, show cars, monster truck demonstration and more. Thousands of tyres, hundreds of battles, but there can be only one Drift King. Repco, D1 and National Drifting Championship Grand Finale, Bay Park Stadium, Friday and Saturday, May 10 and 11. Get your tickets now at D1 and Z. D1NZ.com.com.com. Yeah, come and check us out if you want to come along and check out the action. There's only one place to be, and that is at Mercury Bay Park Stadium in Mount Monganui in Tauranga as we head to the Bay of Plenty for the final. So, there's an issue with one of the drivers there. It is Sam Rawson. He is ready to go, but there's an issue for Braden Maher. That's an OMT battle. So, a five minute call has been called. You know what? We're not going to wait around for that. Let's go straight back into action. This is the first of our top eight battles from the left hand side of the tree. It is Adam. Whitehead going up against Zach Zayden. Out of qualifying P1 yesterday in tricky conditions. He's a great driver of that Plan BS14. Zach Zayden driving pretty pretty well this weekend. Should be a good battle. I definitely cannot wait to see this one here as we get to the pointy end of the Pro Sport Championship. And uh, there's definitely been a massive temperature drop here at Manfield. So, of course, with temperature drops comes a colder or a differing temperature of the track. When you're out there trying to work it out, and I can, I know that I understand that an umbrellas have gone out as well. Steve McIver, look at you go. Looks stunning. Just, yeah, there he is. What a man. And the, the wiper blades are on. See if it affects this run as we see Adam Whitehead initiating. Zach Zayden jumping into that pocket. We don't see any smoke. You see it looks slippery on that sweeper. Well, Zach Zayden, we know he likes to fight back. That car there has been in the D1NZ for a few seasons now. He used to be in the Pro Championship. Came out of the South Island with uh, Michael Sloan, who's now part of the VIP team. And you will see him slide the car around, works his way up the track, and then we'll try to back it through. Heading up to the end of the hairpin. Clean lap for our leader. Clean lap for our leader, that's it. And a challenge we saw on that sweeper on his initiation. And the moisture in the ground, there was no tyre smoke. Adam Whitehead out there, quite wide of the sweeper as you see the replay. 
and that's a beautiful look right there. That's how you get the nice angle. I like to pinpoint that sort of stuff there, but it's uh, out on the gas. The second half of this lap looks like it looks to be fully dry. Both these lads doing a great job. Zach Zayden emulating the angle and the transitions of Adam White hits in the chase run and getting through for a clean lap for both drivers. I was uh, going through the pits today and one of the biggest things that was happening was the amount of rainix that was on the windscreens. Everyone making sure and not just rainix on the outside, anti-fog on the inside. Every time you come to Manfield, you bring your rain -X. You bring you your rain -X. what it's going to be like down here. Yeah, you know what rain -X is? What it does is you don't even use to need to use wiper blades. If you're using rain -X and if you want to get yourself your hands on some, make sure you check out any Repco stall throughout New Zealand. A couple of water droplets on our camera there. Well, they will be side by side. Thumbs up, and off we go. So this is the Mimico Top 8. Round three of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship here at Manfield. Circuit Chris Amon, and it is Zach Zayden who will set the pace. Second half of the battle. Braden Mare, I understand, has made it with one minute to spare. So we'll see that battle come through to find the last spot in the eight between himself and Sam Rawson. But right now, it's the battle on hand, and it is Zach Zayden who leads out. He's got, oh, a bit of a correction, but it is Adam Whitehead in the chase position. Zach Zayden grabbing both of the, grabbing that first zone quite well, moving through splash into outer zone two. Adam Whitehead putting on a pretty good chase run here as they head up into the last corner. They'll come through to finish, and then it will be that they both hold their... See, Zayden almost, so he didn't really get on the gas probably as fast as he needed, needed to, coming out of the last turn, coming out of the hairpin. Uh, we'll go up and have a look. And it's a slight correction for Adam Whitehead in the wide S415, but they set themselves up, and that seemed to be just a, maybe a proximity grab. Two very similar runs in chase and in lead. This could come down to, to the decision, could come down to just that minor mistake that we see Adam Whitehead made on that sweeper. He is a little bit closer in proximity during the first and first half of the last corner than Zach was in his chase run. So definitely going to need to see what the judges think there. The uh, drivers making their way back into the pit area. They'll go down to Steve McIver. Digger Dan, he's waiting to go again. And just needs 66% of the vote. And Andrew Redwood, JT Photodo, they say Zach Zayden takes the win. Zach will be going through. Okay, how good was that, huh? Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, once again, Steve, the weather gods are playing games with us again. Stop bringing that up, mate. Stop <laughs> bringing it up. It's clearing up behind you. Make you through to the four. Yeah, let's go. Let's send it. Oh, I love that. Let's send it. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Adam Whitehead, remember, top qualifier. Uh, second run? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit scrapey. The, the rain started coming down. I just tried to keep up and um, yeah, we weren't we weren't set for rain anyways, but um, nah, shout out to Zach, good good run and uh, we got another chance tomorrow. Hey, uh, can I just ask you quickly, there's a little whisper going around, pro? Are you, are you, are you thinking about going pro? Up to the pros, pro, pro ranks? Yeah, some whispers there. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean it's time to, I've been, you know, six years in pro sport, I've been having a lot of fun with the pro sport party and um, car's ready to step up now and the, yeah, scratch up on the driving a little bit and we should be good. You beat me too, most importantly the driver's up yeah, to yeah. No worries, all right, thank you. Here we go, away with our next battle. We have the ONT of Sam Rawson and Braden Mir. Sam Rawson in the lead, he's gonna be on the left-hand side of these cones here. Braden Mare in the chase. Let's see what they can do to try and get a clean battle through for these two gents. Let's 
Sam Rawson on the lead up. Bradomir in the chase. They both initiate together. Definitely looks to be a little bit slippery. Don't see much tire smoke from Bradomir's vehicle. Sam Rawson switching, doing what he needs to do at the end of that sweeper. Grabbing that zone, out of zone one as he gets out to outer zone two. Switches up high as he sets himself up. But out of zone three, playing it safe. It's safe into the last corner where we see Sam Rawson losing all the grip and having a spin. Braden Mir almost looked like he was into a spin beforehand. So we have to go back and look at the replay there. But in turn, it will be a 10 0 Sam Rawson having a spin on the final corner. Where they're playing a game. Here we are with the replay. Braden Mir pretty unsettled in the chase run there. We see Sam Rawson switching through Splash, grabbing that Apex, heading out wide to OZ2, setting himself up for a smooth transition through to three. And an aggressive switch there onto the lock stops for Sam Rawson. Spinning on his own with Braden Mir having to take a spin to avoid the contact. Nice sweeper though from Sam Rawson as we see Braden Mir struggling a touch with the pace of the lead car. Sam Rawson, if he had finished this lap off, would have been a great lead lap. Yeah, of course, this is the uh, OMT rerun from the 16, and Sam's really repressed me over the last uh, couple of rounds, but with drifting comes a lot of learning. They come around for the second pass, swapping over. Braden Mir in the lead. Now all he needs to do is reset. If he's got a spotter in his ears, I don't know if he has a spotter or not, tell him all he needs to do is get through this lap, make it through, and you're off to the top eight. And it's so important, but the other thing you can't do is you can't just take your foot off it, essentially. You have to pump in a lap, because if you do, you can make mistakes, and mistakes is what we don't want to see. So we know where the box seat is, and that is from the lead position, so go through, treat it like qualifying, and set yourself a great score. Let's see, Sam Rawson's going to have to apply some pressure here, try and force a mistake. As we see them both enter together, Braden Mir wavering a little bit. Looks like that car's pretty gripped up on that sweeper. Definitely a bit of a difference in speed as he, he misses out of zone one, travels through, gets to out of zone two, switches in to set himself up to get out to the number three. A little bit shallow there from Braden Mir, but he's doing enough to get the points to get through. And enough is all he needs to do as he comes through to first a section of wheel off and more uh, points deductions for the chase driver. And enough is going to be all it takes for a beta mare to fill the last spot in the eight, I'm sure. Let's have a look at the Dale ITM replay as we see our leader comes up. He grabs the foot brake a couple of times, settles the car back down again. Oh, yes, he misses a few clips, but he knows the only thing I've got to do is finish my drift. That's it, Brady Mayer, very shallow on that sweeper with the turn, setting him up to leaving the zone way too early and not getting anywhere near out of zone one. And like I said, Steve, he just needed to finish that lap to grab some points. Crowd kicking back, watching what they see in front of them, which, of course, it's the third round today. It's the fourth round tomorrow when we go back to back. We flip the switch and we reverse them. Well, what are our judges going to say? Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and JT Farido say Braden Mayer will take the victory and move through into the last spot on the eight. So for someone who wanted to munt his car, you're still going. So should we dial that back a bit now? No, just keep it going, mate. Just keep it going. <laughs> oh, get out of here. <laughs> That's the S's right there, and that's the way they got there. So this is the uh, top eight, of course, Mimico top eight. We've already got one spot in the LA Petroleum top four. Daniel Smith and Braden Mayer, they'll be going up against the Zach Zayden, whoever the winner is, and Kesuke Nagashima going up against Matty J. Roddy Knowles versus Isaac Orridge. One spot on the four, only three to go. Yeah, Zach Zayden will be very pleased with himself, already through to the top four. Putting on a, a good drive. 
Good to see him get a good result, Zach. And I think it's his local track. See the next boys lined up. Well, there we go. This is Matty J in the S13 versus Kesuke Nagashima in the 86 fighters, A86. And that car in the lead position is not struggling at all for pace. Probably the smallest engine in the D1NZ, and it is astronomically fast. What? Just wondering what was going on there. A bit of mind games again. We know that Matty J is good for upping up the rear bumper if he needs to, but Keske's got the jump this time. I thought there was a problem to start with, but it doesn't look like a problem at all for Keske Nagashima. That little late six is a rocket. Keske doing a great job out in the lead, grabbing the zones, grabbing zone two, setting himself up for out of zone three. Nails it, doesn't drop a tire. Look at this little smoke machine coming from those little 16s on that A86. And he'll come through to finish crossing the line. And that's a solid lead run for Kesuke Nagashima. And I know there's a lot of support out there. You can see it all over the, uh, the comment section here on Facebook. As we see the replay, a massive gap created that fast little A86. Out of turn one. Pivots that car so nicely on that ripple strip for out of zone one, grabs two, heads up to three, doesn't drop a wheel, putting on a great lead run. Matty J just not in the proximity, not, not where he needs to be at all. With Keske, just a lot more forward drive, a lot more pace in that little car compared to the Jay-Z. Now, I don't know if this is correct. Somebody said that they think it's got 15s on it, not 16s. Surely they're not that, uh, that small. Uh, 15s, my buddy Ruben. Correct me online, beauty. Well, 15, it's even more impressive, but he's done some good calculations, Keske, of gear ratios and things like that. Bring back the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little rocket, it's so good to see. So good to see, see Keske, my, one of my Rickham teammates. Got grip. Well, they'll line back up side by side again. <laughs> he went from 195s to the big 205s. That's awesome. And Riley does not agree with 13s. No, I'm with you on that, unless they're eagers. 205, 50, 15, confirmed there for Keske. That's a small tyre. All right, well, the Tani Far that is Launch Master Willie says, hi to off you go. Down the straight we go here at Manfield Circuit, Chris Avon. We are trying to find our, ourselves some spots in the four. Matty J, MCA on the back bumper. More bark on the door, and it is time to grab some gears. And Keske's right there with him. Yeah, let's see what Keske does in the chase run here. Doesn't need to overdrive the car. Matty J, a little bit shallow on that sweeper there, not allowing the Keske to get right up into the pocket. As we see, running a little bit wide into OZ2, but he just makes it. Matty J keeps it on the track as we hit up to three. It's a great camera angle with that drone, and Keske doing a, a, a very good job in the chase position here. Putting it up towards Matty J. Matty J. Hold on to it, Matty. <laughs> Off the track. Keske in that little 8 6. He'll be pumped. <laughs> He's so good. I love Keske. <laughs> oh, we've certainly got some characters in the D1NZ. Keske being one of the. Uh, one of the friendlier ones. All right, we'll have a look at the replay here. So Matty J comes through at this point here and it starts to wash out. Looks like he's going to head back over the ripples. But when you make a slight mistake like that, it can mess up the rest of your lap. We'll see him come through this point here. He's really wide. It starts hammering the throttle. But I think there was another, yeah, right there, there was a slight correction, which actually took him off the track. So three wheels off or more. Keske opening the door. Betty J just not making it across the line there, ending up across. Three wheels? Was it three wheels? No, I'll go with two. Two wheels. Made what? deduction? Yeah. Just a, a small points deduction for one wheel off. Great drive from Keske there, though, in the chase run. His lead run, flawless chase run. Probably the best chase run we've seen all day. I would have to agree with you, and it's worth well, the judges agreed. All three of them said Keske Nagashima will go through. We'll send it down to Stephen McIver. And he hooks Keske Nagashima. How's that feeling in your guts now? Oh, pretty good, mate. I think she's all cleared up, so I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm mate, good. you are on it. That that uh, lead was a cracking lead. <laughs> it wasn't bad, eh? I mean, it's such, such mixed conditions today, so to be able to get something in the dry is, is phenomenal. It's good. It's a good feeling. All right, get ready for the four. Yeah. 
get it done. All right, Matty J was so strong in his last to get into the eight. What went down, brother? How's it going? What went down? Um, I'm not too sure. I think I was still buzzing off the last battle and I just didn't piece things right together. And um, he's a very fast driver and I knew that, but, um, but yeah, just couldn't keep with him. Simple question, how much of this is about the head game now? A lot, a lot of it. Far out, man. Um, I get right in my head, eh? So I was in my head then, but yeah, just took it too lightly. And But yeah, hope he takes it all the way. You put on a good shirt, pal. Well done. Bring on the next one. You got it. Well, bring on the next one. And the next one is right in front of us right now. And it is Isaac Horridge in the Drift Direct BMW going up against the MTF Finance Cambridge. Zombie Van Domin Domino, what else has he got on there? Zach Nova, Mac, Red Star, Signs, Link. He's got them all, PSR. <laughs> this is Rody Knowles. Yeah, good insight there from Matty J as well, just explaining if, uh, how much it is a mental game in drifting. You know, you, you need to be in that zone, coming from one battle on a high into your next, you need to reset. So, definitely uh, can, can agree, can't agree more there with Matty J uh, off the mental game. Well, off we go. So we're riding on board with George from Inspire You. Come on, George, you can go faster than that. Oh, no, he's going to pick them up on the other side. Of course, I should know better. All right, well, let's see what Isaac Orridge can do versus Rody Knowles. Rody, RB25, under the bonnet. But it's acceleration time. Here we go, nice initiation for Isaac Aldridge. Brody Knowles just trying to create that proximity. Aldridge missing that hole of OZ1 as they switch through Splash. He grabs two in the lead. Brody Knowles, not a bad chase going on here, doing a pretty good job in the chase position. Isaac grabbing that last out of zone and then switching to the finish of the track, but he definitely missed a whole lot of OZ1. Well, we're about to see what he missed. All right, let's have a look at this replay here. So, Isaac Aldridge is nice and wide on the sweeper on the line, but he just left and switched a little bit too early and turned, missing that zone. It did set him up for two, but the damage was already done on the sweeper. He gets out to three, doesn't drop a wheel, which we've seen a lot of wheel drops, an aggressive switch up high as he heads into the last corner. And Rody Knowles doing a good job of chasing that. A second replay as we see from a slightly different angle so you can see that there's a big yellow box and the drivers should fill that with both their front basically and their rear wheels as they do the massive touch and go switch didn't get there the rear of the uh, bmw looking quite high why would that be yeah, there's definitely something going on there with the setup in isaac's car and it seems to be working for him because the cars is seeming to be a little bit uh, quite planted on the track but it's, it's very high it looks quite soft so it's probably got a lot of suspension stroke in the back of that BMW. So they head up for their second pass and switch over. Rody Knowles to lead off Isaac. Rody will be buzzing. I know Rody, oh, he'll be buzzing. Rody is he's such a great guy. Very passionate, loves his drifting. <laughs> and so does Launchmaster Willie. Willie Butter. Lots of characters. There's a few of them out on the track at the moment. Rody Knowles, what can he do? Slows him right down here. Like, this was like a Dane and Templeman type move to do when you slow them down and try to get a slingshot. That's it, this is a slingshot. Here we go, Rody Knowles in the lead. Initiates early. Pretty nice line around the sweeper as we see Isaac Aldridge trying to bunch up on that proximity. The switch through and grab out his own two. Rodino's putting on a smoke show as he heads up to three. The drone's hit a goodbye to the drone. The drone exits the chat. And here we go, Rodino's finishing the oh, lap off. Isaac Aldridge jumping up on some proximity there. It'll be good to see a replay from an angle. I just want to see the, the drone bail again. As they finish that lap off. Here we go. Here's the replay. Rodino's putting on a, a pretty good sweep of Steve. Well, he comes through and he looks to grab that out of um, that touch and go with the rear, maybe miss a little slightly on the front. We'll come through and uh, runs this high line, managed to grab it, maybe put a wheel off as we fly to the ground, and then again works that outside line again. Well, we don't know if he's put a wheel off there. He might be saved by a crashing drone. He might be given a lifeline. Man, I'm, I'm okay drone. with that. I'm okay with like that's just. <laughs> this might give us a better angle. Ooh, wow, yeah, okay. just gets a little bit of that zone, but in terms of. 
lead run to lead run. He's gotten closer to that out of zone one as he shifts up. Still can't see if there's a dirt. Yeah, there's there. a slight angle change. He'll come through at this point. Motors through, goes the inside, the outside, looking for discoloration, and I can't see any dirt turbos. Here we go. And is that a dead drone? The Pro drone is on the drone the has left the chat. Huge shout out to George Moody from Inspire U Media. He's been our uh, our drone pilot for the last few years. What a very very talented man. He's got all the toys too. He's got an S15 sitting at home. All right, Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, JT Farido says Isaac Gorge, you can go through to the next round. A little bit more consistency coming through there, huh? That one felt good. Yeah, in that uh, chase run where you got him right now on that last corner, huh? Your proximity was beautiful. Yeah, just felt felt really good in the chase. The car felt real good behind him, and um, it was really nice to be able to close that gap up that we, you know, leave a little bit of a gap at the start and just try and close it up coming into the section. It's quite tight this round three, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is, but that's what we want. Good battles all day. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling really good. Feeling really good. So, all top right. four, right? Go get it. Yeah, boy. Well, yeah, congratulations right. to Isaac there. Let's uh, just see if we can have a quick word maybe with Andrew Redwood. Just wondering how the result came for that one there. Brody and Isaac. Brody is probably about one to two car lengths back from most of it. He probably got posed that up to about a car length back um, after splash. Um, Isaac did miss a few of the outer zones um, through the way, but he wasn't off and he was carrying good pace. Second run came up. Um, Rody had a, quite a shallow run through the sweeper, with quite a few adjustments. Um, switched back low on the track. Took a while to get back on the throttle, and that really sealed the deal for me as far as um, Isaac's chase. Um, Isaac was able to stay quite close to him for the remainder from splash onwards into the hairpin. Um, and yeah, that's really what tipped it over the edge for Isaac for me. Well, thank you very much. It's always great to hear what the judges have to say, and we don't get much better than the three that we've got here with the D1NZ. Definitely, definitely. Good to get an explanation out of the boys up there. Tough job. As we head into another battle in our top eight. Daniel Smith driving well. Braden Mayer with half his car missing. And he's also used up his five minutes. So any issues in that, that's kind of it done. Five minutes are back, of course, for this round onwards. Yeah, got rid of them for the first two rounds and realized well, we probably need to bring them back. So here we go. Braden Mayer. Braden Mayer creating a gap on the sweeper already. Daniel Smith with a little bit of catching up to do. He misses that out of zone one as a lead car. Travels through Splash, grabs it out of zone two, doesn't put a wheel off as he moves through. Just slightly off out of zone three, but a bit further in there than we've seen today as he finishes the lap off. And the proximity from Daniel Smith staying even through the whole, the whole lap, not gaining and not listening. So one of the things that if you do get a separation between yourself and the lead drivers, the judges would like you to go back to and elect to go for the uh, qualifying line again. Correct, correct. Daniel Smith just trying to get it up. Looks like he's using a little bit too much of the loud pedal, switching a touch early there to try and shortcut the track to gain some more proximity. But in turn, Braden Mir has, has just away and gone. The separation's created here, Steve. On the initiation, Daniel Smith not far enough up on, into the pocket with Braden Mir. Yeah, you can see from these angles here, one of the things I'm looking is trying to look at uh, that lead and chase. Because they're so far back, they basically need to mirror each other. A little bit shallow for the chase driver. Uh, Mayor, to me, probably an advantage. As the crowd starts to build on the hill, enjoying a bit of action out here at Manfield Circuit. Chris Amon, of course, this is round number three of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. A couple of umbrellas up out there. We, we, we can't see much of the weather from where we're seated, but there's a couple of umbrellas come up. Does that mean we've got a little bit more rain coming down? Oh, maybe it's just for sun. All right. I hope so. <laughs> Let's head off to the second run of this battle. Second boys. Huh? Here we go. So Daniel Smith will lead Braden Mayer in the chase position. Sort of think that maybe DK Smith excavation. Daniel Smith has a bit of work to do. Talk performance developments on the side door of his car. Braden Mayer, he got into it early. Let's see what Daniel Smith can do as he hits for the touch and go. Daniel Smith putting on a good display here at the lead. Grabs a little bit of that zone. 
Switches through to two. Looks like he grabbed two quite nicely as he sets himself up for three. But Braden Mir, he's off. Ooh. Braden Mir is off. Daniel Smith has to finish this run here. Which it looks like he has done. And that should be enough to see Daniel Smith go through because of a mistake that was... That's all it was. That's all it was. And that's, the, that's drifting. It's cutthroat. One little mistake like that. Even when he had an advantage. Braden Mir having an advantage. Could be a deciding factor to put him on the trailer. But Daniel Smith here, great sweep, though. good angle, good commitment. Actually doesn't get much about his own one at all as they switch through to grab two. Braden Mir came in really, really hot, and he had to make some sort of evasive sort of maneuvers to possibly avoid. And look at how high you see the car just bouncing over. Bouncing over that, over that cone. Yeah, Braden Mir dealing to that S45 line. He's definitely gonna need a, a bit more paint and a couple more bumpers yeah, for his next round, that's I've, for sure. It started as a 14.9, but the way it's going is probably an S12. <laughs> yeah, that point there. Now that's upset his run big time, and of course he's, he would have, he needed to switch a lot earlier than he could. By the time it was time to switch, okay, he's already gonna chuck three, if not four wheels off. Tries to set himself back up and goes, nah, that's me done. Straight line is gonna kill it for me. They'll make their way down in front of Stephen McIver, and we will find out which direction the judges are going to go. I know that they are still having a look at a couple more replays, probably just to ensure that they've got their decision correct. That or they've already made it, and it's time to go and grab a coffee. I think that's the way it will be as DK Daniel Smith takes the victory. Been an up and down sort of day for you, but man, you've, you're, you're still rolling. We're still rolling, we're still there, and we've still got a whole nother day tomorrow, so as long as we can keep the car in one piece, we're doing all right. Mate, don't get ahead of yourself. Still got to finish this one today and maybe even we'll get to the top sure step. Uh, the, the weather a little bit up and down for you? Yeah, but lucky it's still dry. If you look at the windscreen, there's no spots on it yet, so we'll just hope and pray. Well done, weatherman. Nice work. Let's have a quick chat to Braden Mir and half a car. Well, do you think he got further than you thought? Oh, definitely. I uh, definitely got further than I thought, yeah. Stoked with that. Yeah, uh, that was awesome. So, uh, the car's going to need a little bit of work. Oh, yeah, she's pretty bashed up at the moment, yeah. <laughs> but tomorrow's another day. Yeah, exactly, yep. Tomorrow. And tell me, Tim, what do you think it's going to be like going the other way tomorrow? Uh, have we had a go at it yesterday, and yeah, I like it, so... Nah, it should be good. All right, you go patch your girl up. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll try to. Well done, mate. So there you go, Braden Mayer. Just a reminder, too, we are back again tomorrow for round number four. So this is round number three. And I don't know what's going on here in the weather-wise, but Tony, turn your camera over that way. Look at that. Look at over there. There's the next spot coming up. That's Isaac Aldridge up against Cascade. Look at that. Does that look good? Does that make you feel good? It's supposed to have been blowing a gale from midday today. Now, it's on my watch, it says about uh, 1.36. So we are very, very lucky. And just a reminder, when the pros aren't too far away as well, we're going to talk... Uh, we talk about uh, monster trucks, we're going to talk about a few, few different things. So keep it right here. Big battle coming up now. Keep it right here. While well, you're there, you might as well keep it right. How's that been going for you, my friend? <laughs> it's been going very well, actually. Very well. Hello to my roommates over there, Jason. Jason Fearing in America, doing his American tours. Oh, he's in there. He's in America at the moment. Yeah. He's over there. You haven't seen. Love it. Check out uh, Keep It Reet and you'll see Ben Jenkins out there, our New Zealand representative for Keep It Reet, with uh, some pretty spectacular car giveaways over the last, uh, well, for many years. Do you know what car that Keep It Reet's up to in, in the giveaways? Would never clue. There's many. There's probably, been many. Probably more than 50. Uh, over Australia and New Zealand, there's been a lot. So. Yeah. yeah. And from what I heard yesterday from you, you can't tell us of anything that's happening, which means that there has to be some big build that we <laughs> don't know about. So if you do you get a chance, check them out on Facebook. Here we go, this is going to be a good battle here, Keskade. Can he keep up with his consistent lead runs? He's put on a great show already. It's been a pleasure to watch. And Isaac Aldridge doing some, doing some parking practice out on the grid by the looks. Yeah. I thought those BMWs came with parking assist. <laughs> hear that distinctive note of Keskade's car, I can hear it through our commentary you box. Ran, you ran, one of, you ran an SR once upon I did, time? I did. I still love them. Still love them, SR20s. Epic little engines. I just like the rumble of, OK, I've got a V8 next to you. Let's go. Yeah. So arguably, Isaac Orridge's car, the motor... I mean, this is like Adam Davies going up against anything. That motor in Orridge's car is at least double what this guy's got. Probably. Not Probably. in power, but it's definitely in uh, cubic it, inches. It could, it could be in power as well. I'm pretty oh, wow. sure Isaac Orridge's got a blower under that hood. Here we go. Right, yeah, Kiske leading him off. This is going to be a good battle. 
All right, where's the support on Facebook for Kiske Nagashima? Maybe there's some Isaac Orridge fans. I'm sure there is as we look at the head-to-head. SR20 versus Alice 2. It's an A86 versus an E92. And they say it's 450 versus 470. I don't know about that. But look at the speed of Kiske Nagashima as he moves into action. This is to find a spot in the four. This is round three of the D1NZ Pro Sport Championship. Kiske putting on another flawless lead here, grabbing a bit of that out of zone one, grabbing two. He's just so fast, Steve. He's, he's, he's doing a great job in the lead run here on his qualifying line, hitting his marks. And Isaac Aldridge just being caught out by the fast of the weight six in the lead oh, and nowhere near him. He's absolutely powering through at the moment as uh, Kiske Nagashima putting the foot down as they go down the mid straight. Uh, these, these drivers love this track because you can literally get back so fast. They're all trying to hit 200 plus, which is easy to do in a drift car when you've got this much power as these guys do. The most power in New Zealand motorsport is in the D1NZ and we can see them dancing around the track right now. Yeah, just a little look back on this replay. Kiske, yes, doing a great job in the lead run. Nice and consistent, but he hasn't grabbed. He's been a bit shallow and hasn't grabbed those zones nicely. So so things that they'll look at is Isaac Orridge, as we, uh, he definitely put a wheel off. So this one's going to show the touch and go and how far in or out. So he's grabbed it with the rear, not really with the front. And at this point here, we need to see that car in that box. And I that box is where Isaac Orridge is. Again, needed to be there as well. He wasn't. Isaac Orridge obviously smashing it over. One, one wheel, maybe even two wheels off for a deduction. So that could uh, definitely hurt him in the long run here. But Kiske putting on a fast lead. He's, he's turned that a little late six. They've turned that thing up and turned it into an arrow. There we go. They've turned up to the line for their second run. Isaac Aldridge to lead off. Let's see what Kiske can do in the chase here. Craig Marshall says that car sounds like Angry Bees. I've got to be I, I totally concur with that. All right, Isaac Orridge, what can you do? Again, he's going for that slowdown slingshot, I think. We know that that car's got a lot of... Well, if he can grip up, he's going to go. There we go. I hope Isaac Orridge isn't going to play any games here for fast Kiske, but let's see how Kiske adapts to maybe a slower car in front of him. As they both flick in, Isaac Orridge on a nice arc, nice line. Kiske just sitting in that pocket. It's a good chase run starting off to be for Kiske. Well, As they switch to two, Isaac Aldridge gets out of zone two very nicely, but then he's just come up a little bit short. No, he's perfect and out of zone three. This is a good lead lap from Isaac Aldridge. And allowing, a fantastic chase. Allowing Kiske to chase. That's the thing. It's a massive thing. Big leads, great leads, give great chases. And a couple of wheels off for Isaac Aldridge, maybe, coming out. Let's go with two. They're both happy. They're both uh, whacking the roofs of their car. Yeah, good chase run there from Kiske as we go to the replay. How does Kiske keep his car so straight? Fantastic team. As we see the uh, the journey back around. And this is the lead run by Isaac Orridge. Kiske in that pocket nicely, but yeah, I'm very impressed with Isaac Aldridge getting all that zone, then getting right out to the edge of the track there. It's a good section of driving for him in the lead run. You can see Kiske just taking advantage of that great lead run Isaac's trying to put on until we see two wheels off just before the section there. Just before the section ends, two wheels off Isaac Aldridge. That's going to be a major deduction. Well, it's definitely going to be a major deduction. We saw him put a wheel off in the first run. We saw him put two off coming out. We uh, know that Kiske was probably shallow on his, some of his, uh, on his lead run. But it's going to be enough. Kiske Nagashima gets all three strikes. He's going through. OK, forget the butterflies, forget the bad blat. Yep. You must be feeling good right now. Oh, we're on, mate. We are feeling very good right now. That chase was a ripper, particularly into that last corner, mate. You were yeah. all over him. Yeah, no, like, realistically, he put on a really good lead. And it was really good to follow, so I just did as much as I could to get as close as I could to make, put on a show. So well, now you're in the hunt to win the big one. Yeah, we'll get it done, mate. All Have right, see you soon. Just to remind you, too, we're going to just, uh, once we've got that next run, we're going to call a halt because we're going to go live on Sky Sport and Fox Sport after uh, 2 o'clock. So we're going to run the 3 and the 4 and the championship runs after 2 o'clock. Right at the last, eh? Right at the last, those wheels off, eh? Yeah, unfortunately, just, just washed up the track a little bit and just couldn't keep it on the couldn't keep it on the black stuff but that's all right Kiske did a great lead run and I couldn't keep up so that's what it is 
I get that feeling that within the way you're looking at me, you're kicking yourself. Yeah, a little bit, but oh, you know what? That's racing, isn't it? So on to the next one and keep going. And valuable points and another round tomorrow. That's the one. That's the one. Nice driving, buddy. Thank you very much. Gutted, but that's okay. He's a. Uh lives to fight again tomorrow and that's it that's a good point there we have another round tomorrow these drivers these guys that are pushing their cars to the limits as we're going to see some some epic battles in pro you need to keep the, the reliability of that vehicle to get it through for some more championship points tomorrow and reliability is something that's already plagued us for the uh, yesterday in qualifying we've had a couple of drivers uh, that couldn't make it today and uh, that's been in both the pro sport and the pro field the pros, they managed to find new cars and bits and pieces, and we'll talk about that as the day goes on. Zach, that's a, such a slow start, but maybe that's to do with the weather, and he also wants to get the slingshot on Daniel Smith, who probably uh, transitions into drift maybe a little bit sooner than Zach does. Yeah, it's definitely wet on the first section of that sweep, and as we hear the tyres gripping up, Oh no, we're wet the whole track, so definitely a big challenge for these boys. Haven't driven a, a, a wet lap since this, this morning, being in the groove, being in the zone, but Zach Antic's doing a, a good job here in the lead. Actually, both drivers doing a fantastic job to get through this section well, the section for conditions that they don't know. Very nice lead run in the conditions, and a great chase run, and that's where there's obviously grip because the rain hasn't got there yet. Great chase run there from D Smith. So Zach doing a, a rather good job in the lead also. All right, well, let's have a look at this lap here. Zach, I think he did a great job considering the current conditions. He comes through, just drags across uh, drags across the outside of that uh, outer zone, and then he makes his way through, and he'll set himself up for Splash. So Splash is the centre one, and that actually comes through to the tail end. We're going to make our way back out into the, uh, the outside, head around the uh, hairpin, and then it's straight down onto the gas to finish. That's it. Look, as we see some tyre smoke coming from Daniel Smith's car, it's definitely a, a little bit of grip at the ending there. Just had a couple of uh, our VVIPs come through and, uh, and check out what's going on before they head up into the broadcasting truck. Daylight here bringing us all the action of this beautiful overhead shot. I've just realised we haven't seen the drone for a while, so I think George just got some repairs to do, hasn't he? It looks like he's gone offline. <laughs> Maybe gone offline up here, but as we see, the last of this replay between Zach and Daniel as they line up for their second run. Swapping around, Daniel Smith to be in the lead. And they'll kind of know what the conditions are of the track. They've just had a, they've just had a quick lap in the, in the wet on the sweeper. They felt it. And now they can change their, their driving style. Oh, look at Willie go. Willie just brings smiles. All right, DK Smith excavation. Daniel Smith, what can you do? The 411 and Daniel Lyman's S13 going up against Zach Zayden. Drift Antics, check him out on YouTube. They'll be side by side as they accelerate, and it will be Daniel Smith who will set them alight to start the second run. Yeah, Daniel Smith creating a little bit of a gap here on entry as he's initiated. Looks like the rain might have gone. Oh, no, he's slippery. He's slippery. He's out wide in the sweeper, but he comes, gets back into the touch and go and grabs out his own one as he transitions through, through Splash. Just grabs out his own two quite nicely as he switches up the hill. Keeps it on the track Keep as well. Keeps it on the track. One little wheel drop as we see Zach Zadon jump in the, the chance to get some proximity to finish the lap off. Runs it high and then comes through to finish. And a grip up to finish down the back straight. I don't know which way I'd go on this one here. That's a tough one. That, that is a tough one. They looked like two very similar leads, two very similar chases. So, see the judges up there possibly jumping into another replay. Nice commitment from Daniel Smith on this week, but not knowing how, how much grip he's actually going to have. He actually filled that touch and go quite nicely, but it was maybe more, more uh, go than there was with the touch. Grabs that outside and he heads it about this, this way as well. We can see that the slight dirt turbo, and then again, setting himself up nicely. Gets right up, not quite as far up as he can, but that beautiful little slingshot. We don't see any uh, discoloration as he finishes, so it looks like he's kept it on the uh, on the black stuff. Zach Zayden on the attack in the later half of that, of that run. 
trying to get up onto that daughter. Zach yeah. looks like he might have dropped the left front wheel off as well coming through there. And the other one is he's relatively shallow, but that's all about proximity at this point here. So I'd say because he's on the door, the judges are definitely not going to mark him. We don't want to have follow the leader. We'd love to have both of them just side by side the whole way through. Yeah, he's definitely sacrificed a whole lot of his line to get back up into the proximity, whether the judges wanted to want to see that. I don't know, but here we go with the decision. This is a big one. All right. And it's going to be Daniel Smith who goes through and... Oh, this is brilliant. That looked just slightly challenging. Slightly challenging, yeah. It's kind of getting patchy now, so it's, um, it's a little bit dry and a little bit wet in places, but... Um, Far out. That's the, this is the best we've done in competition so far. So, and you're up against a driver that looks pretty flawless right now, in Nagashima. Yeah, oh, yeah, teammates too. So, uh, yeah, we'll see see how we can get on. Be nice. Be nice. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Zach. Well, it's, well, mate, you're still going to have a crack at third and fourth. So, valuable points, right? Yeah, mate. Uh, weather gods once again. Um, no, I. I I made it this far right from the bottom, so uh, I'm pretty stoked with myself and my team. We've got a little team going on, so, yeah. And most importantly, up against Isaac Aldrich, so that's going to be a cracking battle. Yeah, sweet. Oh, I'll bring it on. Let's go. I don't know. I had another battle, so thank you. Well, mate, you've got a little bit okay. of time off because we're going we're to play this after two hour live on Sky Sports, so just go, go prep your head, prep the car, and get good yeah. to go. Sweet, let's go. All right. Cheers, mate. All righty. This is round three, tomorrow's round four, and where does it all finish up in season 21? Bay Park. The Repco Dewan International Drifting Championship is heading to Tauranga for the grand finale of the 2024 season. 50 of New Zealand's best sideways masters take on New Zealand's House of Drift, the concrete jungle of Bay Park Stadium, in a two-night electrifying motorsport showcase, which crowns a champion. An atmosphere like no other with high horsepower, drifting battles, show cars, monster truck demonstration and more. Thousands of tyres, hundreds of battles, but there can be only one Drift King. Repco D1 International Drifting Championship Grand Finale, Bay Park Stadium, Friday and Saturday, May 10th and 11th. Get your tickets now at D1NZ.com. Well, there it goes. This is the battle tree. This is the way they got there. So, of course, in the final, in the Repco final, we'll see Daniel Smith versus Keske Nagashima. We've just seen the battle that he had in the Allo Top 4 with himself and Zach Zayden. He had a great win against Braden Mayer in the Mimico Top 8, and he started with the Justin Patterson win in the Top 16. We got a Keske Nagashima. He just took the win over Isaac Horridge in the 4. He went through Rody Knowles in the 8, and then it was... Uh, where was he? He's in the Top 16. Well, ladies and gentlemen, everyone that's... Uh, tuned in on YouTube and of course on Facebook thanks for tuning in today if you want to see more head across to Sky Sport we enjoy uh, enjoy having your company we'll see you shortly there instead until then we'll see you tomorrow as we bring it back to Facebook and YouTube on uh, for round number four this is the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship Series